hello everybody and welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. If you recognize the music, it's the uh, title track from 1917. It was uh, probably one of the best films I've seen. Uh, I know a lot of people disagree on that. Um, I know there's been, it's been a very polarizing uh, film, but I think that uh, historically I really enjoyed it and uh, from a just a just an enjoyable viewpoint I mean holy cow uh, at the end of the film our entire audience which was made up of everybody from like nine and ten year olds up to like 80 or 90 year olds uh, just sat there stunned after what we had seen and we sat there in silence uh, good a good ways into the credits it seemed like an eternity it was probably about 45 seconds to a minute but we just sat there stunned at what we had just seen and if you haven't seen 1917 I highly recommend it uh, it was the one that was kind of sold as you know one continuous shot uh, which of course it wasn't but uh, it sure seems that way because of the way they cut the film and uh, put it all together uh, seamlessly it just looks like one continuous shot um, and this is the rest of the soundtrack happening in the background so I thought it'd be fitting that we do a round of Axis Nelly's 1914, and we're going to shed a little bit more light on the subject here. Hopefully that's a little better. And uh, as you know, with the current coronavirus uh, lockdowns happening, uh, we're right here uh, in the, I think it's March 21st or 22nd right now. Kind of lose track of time when you're on holidays as a teacher. Um, but with the, the lockdowns and the self-isolations that people are being encouraged to take part in, it's not difficult to see why it's tough to get together for games. My friendly local game store actually uh, had to shut down their gaming area. They're still open for retail business, but even that might probably end this week. We'll see. Uh, up here in Canada, we're... Uh, yeah, hanging in there, I guess. Um, we don't have nearly the, the population that some places have, but we do have large cities as well, you know, a few million people in a bunch of our cities, and uh, it's, uh, you know, obviously the coronavirus can spread as easily as the common cold, so we're just hoping that people will uh, smarten up a little bit and, and just think of the other people around them. I uh, saw some disturbing footage of, of people in various locations basically saying, well, we're young and healthy, it doesn't matter if we get sick, and not realizing, of course, that they're part of the problem of uh, why the, the virus continues to spread and kill people who are at risk. So, you know, if you're out there and you're listening to this and it's it's still going on, you know what, hey, just, uh, just hunker down, right? Hunker in the bunker. Uh, you know, for some people have lost their jobs over this and uh, they're scrambling for money and they're going out and taking odd jobs that they can. And uh, that's, a, that's a different situation. But for those of us who, you know, we, we don't need to go out and, uh, you know, just walk around and rub shoulders with people, just stay home. Just stay home. Be safe about it. And uh, I hope that uh, the coronavirus does go away I don't think it'll ever really go away, but I hope that uh, the lockdowns and everything are resolved soon. I hope by the time some of you are watching this video, it's over. And you're saying, what was the big deal? And uh, I really hope that's the case. But I think we'll only be saying that if people do uh, uh, take the time to do what they can to, uh, to stop, the, stop the spread of the virus and not add to it. Uh, so we're going to be playing the... Uh, Essentially, the out-of-box rules here, we are going to play with the Russian Revolution. And when I say we, of course, I'm playing by myself here. And uh, I'm going to try a tactic that uh, the, um, it's the opposite of what the Germans tried in the war. So uh, we'll see if you can pick up on that as we go. Um, but we're going we're gonna to see if we can't, uh, can't handle this. Uh, using a, the different strategy. Ah, I'll just tell you what it is and then we'll see if it works out. Essentially the German strategy of the war was to fight a holding action in Russia, rush to Paris, and once France had fallen then turn their attention back east and then go take out Moscow. 
that was their their hope. Their hope was that uh, Italy wouldn't be in the war by then, and uh, that Britain would sue for peace. That was the that was the plan, and it came within a few miles of actually working. Um, so we're going to try the opposite. We're going to see if we can't do a holding action against the West and send as much as we can into Moscow and see if we can't, by turn four, uh, just take Moscow. Now, I know that I'm doing this. So obviously, playing against myself, I just pile everything into uh, Moscow. But we're playing with the Russian Revolution rules. And we know that then, if some territories around Moscow, I believe it's three or four territories around Moscow, fall, uh, then Moscow itself will revolt, and then Germany and Austria-Hungary can send everything west. So we're going to give that a whirl today. We'll see if the dice are willing to help us out a bit. Uh, it'll be obvious, even if there were another player here, it would be obvious to them, because we are going to send everything this way, and then fight a delaying action, like a holding action here, as long as we possibly can. We'll see if, uh, if it's possible. We know that in the, this game, pardon me, no, the hiccups, um, we know that in this game, the central powers uh, tend to have some trouble winning. Um, you've got three economies uh, fighting against five economies, and uh, the Ottoman economy is can be wiped out single-handedly by the British that are down here and the meager stuff that they can pump out of India. Uh, it is possible. So we'll see what happens as we go through here, and we'll see if it's if it's even possible. Uh, the strategy that I'm going to use, the French player and the British player would instantly know what's going on, uh, which means that the British fleet has to die, and the Germans may have to spend some money on subs just to keep the British off the, off the continent. But we'll see what happens here, uh, see if this is, is worth it at all, see how much of a royal pain the Germans can make of themselves down here in Africa, and we'll let you know how everything, how everything turns out after round one in just a moment. All right, round one is completed, and uh, we'll give you a quick survey of the board. We'll start in the Middle East, and here the British um, have decided to put a lot of pressure on. Now, we're again, we're playing the out-of-box, which means that India can place as many things, or the British can place as many things as they want in India. Uh, as far as ground units and aircraft go, they cannot, of course, build ships. This represents pretty much the unending supply of uh, material they could pull out of the, the Pacific and uh, India. Uh, and nothing could really stop them, so that's that. Now I know some people say, oh, you shouldn't be able to do that because it's unbalanced. But we'll, uh, we'll just play with it and see what happens here. Some people put a limit of four, some p people put a limit of five. Some people say, nope, you can't build down there, which I don't think is very good because then if I'm the Ottoman, I have nothing to fear. Um, from the British, and it's basically uh, I'm down to a one-front war. So, speaking of the Ottoman, uh, they decided to bulk up here in Mesopotamia because the British thrust into Persia has failed, and they've also placed a whole bunch of stuff in the Syrian desert. Obviously, this is because they can threaten here, they can reinforce here, and they can also strike to take that back, along with a good stack here in Smyrna. Uh, they, of course, took Bulgaria as they want to do. Uh, in Africa, very briefly, the Italians came across from Libya to help out a little bit and brought the guy into British East Africa. Of course, the British took that, the Germans take the middle, the British take the south. This is all pretty standard stuff for uh, 1914. And uh, the Germans begin their little crawl across here and they're chased by the French. Now, something that I do, I know some people uh, think this is a bad use of French resources, but I'm more of a... You know, if we can knock down Germany any way possible, I'm that kind of a guy. The Germans start with $4 in Africa, which is, uh, you know, turns out to be about 10% of what they make. Uh, they have 35 to start with. But then they scoop up a couple more here, and they grab that and knock down the British a little bit. And they can make a quite a nuisance out of themselves. So what I like to do is grab a couple of uh, troops out of North Africa here and uh, bring them on down on a transport and then we can quickly threaten the Germans and start uh, taking away and they really have not much of an offensive punch they've only got four guys in an artillery and even if they got them all together uh, the British and French and even their Italian allies here combined can uh, take care of that pretty quickly so uh, 
that's what I like to do, but uh, we'll, we'll see if it works out. The French, of course, also liberate, to, uh, or activate, pardon me, Portugal, uh, and get some free swag over there. Uh, Russia. Again, we're doing the uh, Russia first scenario here, and Russia's feeling it already. Um, the Austro-Hungarian thrust into Serbia failed gloriously. They only got one hit while receiving three hits. Not a good way to start the war. Um, and then they went into Romania, and uh, they took it, but then the Russians counterattacked and uh, are now threatening Budapest if they can put enough pressure on. Russians had to leave some guys behind in Sevastopol because they knew that the Ottomans uh, always have this uh, back door into Russia and they want to keep something behind anyway so it's not just a walk in the park. Uh, the Austro-Hungarians marshaled everybody into Galicia and the Russians pulled back from Poland and Livonia just brought everybody back into Belarus as kind of a, a jumping off point to attack Livonia or Ukraine uh, with everything they've got. That everything they've got can reach Ukraine, and a lot of what they got can reach Livonia. So wherever the Germans go, there'll be a meeting there. But the Austro-Hungarians actually have more troops. Uh, no aircraft yet, but they did build one. So, um, yeah, I think Russia's, Russia's in a really bad way here. Uh, just after one round. Uh, but, as we look over here, we see that the Italians held on to Venice, and will likely take it back. Um on the next round. Well, I won't say likely, but there's a good shot. And then, of course, Austria-Hungary -Hung uh, proper is going to be in trouble. Uh, so we'll see if this, you know, all go, no quit for the East actually works out. Because if Venice goes back to Italy, then they've kind of got an open door. The Italians also took Albania, as they always do. And uh, now they can take Trieste on the next round. And Austria-Hungary has to has to reply to that. They can't ignore that. So it might be a one-turn pause where Vienna moves into Trieste and hold the Italians there while they deal with Serbia. Um, but we'll see. The, the Germans, therefore, had no losses on the Eastern Front, just sent everybody east and uh, took Poland uh, without a struggle. On the mainland here, we see that they also took Belgium and didn't lose much. And uh, they took Lorraine. Uh, actually, they, they didn't take Lorraine. Lorraine had uh, a few guys left. And uh, then the French, of course, counterattacked and took it back with a huge stack remaining. But Alsace, as we know, does have 13 guys right now and three artillery. So that's going to be no pushover. And they have some reserves, but not a ton. In the ocean, the Germans won rather convincingly here. Uh, they did lose three subs. Uh, but you can see, uh, I decided to spend some money. This is uh, not a ton of money. It's 19, unless it's about half of what they're making, a little less than what half, the, what half their budget for the second round, anyway. But uh, the British then put their whole build in India because if they had built it in eight, uh, all this German uh, fleet could come down there and just kill it again, and that just puts Britain behind. Britain did bring over from Canada some guys, put them in Brest. The French do have a couple of battleships and a cruiser here that are shielding the Portuguese uh, fleet and force. Americans just saved their money, so they now have $40, and that's just something I do now whenever I play uh, the Entente, is I will play, I will just hold on to the American money until uh, the end of turn three, in which case I do my whole purchase then, and you can, you can build exactly what you need with the all the money you've got there. I um, think that's pretty much it for round one. Uh, so you can see that the French are under no huge stress here, uh, especially because the Germans now have a gap in the steady stream of Germans. Austria-Hungary also has a gap, but there is no gap here. <laughs> so we're going to see if this actually works. And for the Russian Revolution rule, they need to have uh, three uh, Russian territories that are adjacent to Moscow as well as one other and, and Moscow is also contested I believe I'm gonna have to check that up one more time but I believe that's what it is and so when they when they wrote that rule they basically are 
trying to show what is happening in about 1917. A little nod to the music here. Uh, and yeah, Moscow needs to be contested. I was just looking that up. And so when you have Russia in such a bad way, Germany, as we know, in 1917 was able to pull a few million guys from the east and ship them across, and that's when they had their big push. And uh, that really worried everybody. But as we know, when that happens, at about the same time, the Americans are going to enter the war. And in this game, there is no rail, right? So as, as much as the Germans come over, they send a bunch of guys over, uh, they probably won't see much of the war unless the, it goes on till turn 10 or 12. Um, so we're going to see if this, if actually this whole thing works out. Uh, I still have my doubts. I think Moscow can fall, but I think it might be at the cost of, uh, at too high a cost to the Central Powers. But we'll let you know what happens on turn two in just a moment. And one little note I wanted to point out here is the uh, economies of the Central Powers and the Entente. As you can see, there is a, a decent gap, uh, 30 bucks between the two of them, but uh, the Central Powers, all their money's on the continent already and where it needs to be. So uh, we'll see uh, what these numbers do after round two. All right, round two is in the books, and uh, it has been entertaining, you know, just playing solo here. It's still uh, still a lot of fun because it's like playing chess against yourself. You try to outthink and outthink, and but then the dice help even out all those thoughts that you have and all those grand plans you have. Uh, to wit, the Ottoman, uh, who are being a real pain in the butt here, but uh, the Brits were able to take hold of Persia, once again spending their entire build in India. Uh, we'll look up at the uh, North Atlantic in a moment. Um, but the Ottomans have marshaled all their forces here. They gave up Transjordan to the British and decided not to fight for it, but just to kind of get things into a position where they can uh, support themselves quite well no matter where the British strike. It looks like the Ottomans can uh, fend off. Uh, they bought a plane because they do have a number of artillery here, which, as you know, help. Uh, the artillery goes up to a four. Uh, so that's always handy. Uh, the British um, have decided to move down a little bit of force here to help out. The Italians have come down. The French landed in the Belgian Congo and took that for a buck. The Germans, of course, have coagulated here in Rhodesia. And the British took back Angola when they did that. So the, uh, the ball is in the Germans' court at this point. And the little uh, ring around the rosy here is going to be uh, ending uh, in not too long a time as the French continue to move across and uh, start picking off that minor German economy. Uh, up here, uh, the Italians uh, have been able to take Trieste as it was empty. So they went up there. This force is probably going to die thanks to this force. Uh, the Italians had very poor rolling. They only killed four things with all the dice that they had there. Uh, but they only lost a couple things too, so it really wasn't... A horrible, horrible turn. Uh, not a not a huge setback for them, uh, but they're still held there, and they're still down two bucks there. But now they're up six here, so they're doing a little better that way. Um, but uh, the reason I did that was because with Austria Hungary going whole hog to the east here, I thought you know let's see if we can't keep them a bit honest, and that's what's happening now is they're going to have to pull back and uh, take care of this minor Italian nuisance before heading east again. Uh, the Ottoman have helped come into uh, Romania here to, to assist as the Austro-Hungarian uh, attack from last round was rather anemic. And so the, uh, the uh, Ottoman came in and they actually got, I think, four hits on seven dice, uh, which was uh, pretty good. Uh, those are all the Bulgarian troops that they got at the beginning of the, <laughs> of the game. Um, Ukraine had a good stack of Austro-Hungarians in there, and the Russians brought everybody they could and uh, crushed it hard, and obviously have a lot left over. But the Ottoman have seized on an opportunity and have moved up. Now, of course, they'll probably be dispatched by the British force here. But again, it's just trying to uh, keep the Entente busy doing a whole bunch of other things. 
uh, and Russia trying to reclaim territory, well, you have a good stack here and a, a bigger stack here that are going to be causing grief. Now, the Russian Revolution rule is that uh, three uh, territories adjacent to Moscow must be owned, like controlled, not contested, controlled by the CP, plus one other territory must be controlled or contested, and Moscow must be contested. Now, this can only happen after turn four. Uh, so, or round four and on. So I guess during round four as well. And so we're only finishing round two. We're moving on to round three. So even if they could pull off uh, that, those things, they couldn't actually uh, use it to their advantage in the Russian Revolution rule. And it's an automatic thing that happens or could happen, but then the central powers all have to agree. Now I'm playing by myself and my goal was to have the Russian Revolution happen. So of course, if everything is in place for that to happen, then the uh, central powers will accept. All right. But as you can see, Austria-Hungary really takes it on the chin in this game. And I think that's, it's very well designed because <laughs> they did have a monstrously large uh, army that did very, very little <laughs> in the war, considering uh, the size uh, of the army. They got tied up in Italy, they got tied up in the south for a while. It took them a while to get into Serbia. Uh, Serbia held them at bay uh, using the terrain uh, expertly, and also when you're fighting for your homeland, right? Uh, and then the Austro-Hungarians on the Russian front were uh, very anemic as well. Uh, the Germans, as we've seen, have been pushing into Russia, and there's really not much stopping them from just roaming around. So the Russian Revolution rule could be in play here. Uh, we'll see what happens. Some thought I had, though, was this big stack of, of Russians here just crushing into Galicia and then trying to go for Vienna. Now, there is this great big stack, and when I, th I thought of that and I countered it by not moving everybody <laughs> because the Germans could, could come in and wreck that plan as well. Uh, so it's really tough. I get these these ideas, and then uh, when it gets to the other person's turn, I'm like, oh, I can counter that. So, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, the Germans actually sent a little bit of stuff west here because the Western Front is not all quiet. It's quite a mess. The Germans uh, have now uh, lost a little bit of economy um, from what they had before. They're down three from Alsace and uh, they've lost their Belgian money as well. Large fleet here, and at the start of uh, their turn, they'll be able to repair that ship. And, uh, but the French here have moved up uh, with some presence, you could say, a couple of battleships. They've got a cruiser in there and a couple transports, and the British lent a cruiser in there as well. So the Germans might do a Hail Mary and try to go in there. If they actually won that battle, uh, this might actually work, um, but the British, in my mind, are probably going to be building some transports next round um, just to uh, uh, get some pressure uh, onto the Germans a bit more. Although they do have a lot of pressure here, but they, they haven't lost a, a ton yet. Um, I'll show you the economy in just a moment. Uh, the French, four men, four artillery and they transported up their stuff from Portugal up north. As you can see, Americans again just took their money, so they got 60 bucks now. They'll be able to spend when they're going to get in on the war. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, not, I'm not really sure if this is a great idea. Uh, it looks like you can definitely get the Russians here, but I'm not sure if uh, the Germans can hold long enough. Um, I think what the Germans have over here right now is going to have to be it uh, if they don't want Berlin to fall. But I could be wrong. I, it's really tough to tell. But we'll see. As long as the Brits are off the continent, it's only France versus them. And, uh, and you know, France's economy is not too bad. Let's go take a look at it right now, actually. Oh, and by the way, these beautiful coasters. I picked up a couple sets of these. We just use these uh, whenever I play, especially with new players. I put them in the order of the... Uh, the turns so and there you have it um, they're from historical board gaming I'm not sure if I mentioned that but uh, they're great they're only a couple of bucks so pick up some of those good stuff uh, so here we go um, of course I haven't done the math again the, to add everything up so let me just do that quickly and that's not gonna be that anymore 
So we got 37, 61, 82. Whoops. Here you go. And this one here, we've got 50, 85, 104, and 130, whoop, 22. Ah, 122. So actually, the uh, Entente has gone up. The central powers have dropped a little bit here on round two. Uh, but as we see here, it looks like there's a lot of a lot of land that can be gobbled up pretty quickly, and uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. I think usually France is down quite a bit by this point, um, but we'll see what happens and uh, see if the Germans are going to do do something over here and see if they will try to make a dent into that fleet. We'll see on round three. Turn three is done, and we'll start up north this time. We got the Germans have uh, taken a good chunk of Russia here, and the Russians have, for the most part, turtled. And we'll explain why in just a moment. The Ottomans have had some fun there, and the Brits finally took Persia, but didn't have enough strength to take Mesopotamia this round. So it's uh, uh, yeah, that's just where they're at. They have a couple of transports down here are going to serve their needs. I actually brought a couple guys from Arabia over to Persia to help bulk that up a little bit. Uh, the Ottoman are actually doing pretty well right now. Um, they have uh, they've been able to help out a little bit here and there. And uh, as you know, last round they helped out in Romania and then were able to take that stack along with uh, some artillery here up to Sevastopol and they... They took out some Brits who had gone up there and killed the one uh, Ottoman. Uh-oh, that's pretty foreboding music. All right. Uh, so the Ottoman are actually doing okay. They made 21 bucks this last round. Um, so that's, that's, that's doing pretty well, I think. Um, in Africa here, the Germans have been hemmed down into the south and uh, are uh, probably uh, a turn or two away from being driven out of Africa entirely. We have Austro-Hungarians had a much better round three than they did a round two. Uh, of course, they secured Romania. They got Albania back. They failed to take Trieste, though. They left one lone Italian there. Uh, but in Venice, they actually held on with one man and a fighter, of course, but uh, they'll be evacuating, I'm sure, next round. Uh, the Italians, of course, having no other natural enemies at this time, uh, putting everything they can into there while they've been going across. Austria-Hungary has been headed east. You can see the Russians here. They moved a small stack in. And... Uh, the Germans said, that's okay, you can have it. We'll drop a guy in Ukraine. We'll send this huge army into Belarus and then we've got another stack up here of about 10 guys so Russia not a lot of options here they don't really want to venture out too far they want to leave enough firepower behind to hopefully kill anything that goes in or else they lose that six bucks um, so they want to make sure they hang on to that now granted they are going to go first they'll go before Germany so they'll make that six bucks this round but next round maybe not um, the Brits may have to actually forego hurting the Ottomans in Ottoman territory, and they may have to actually move north to try to take a little pressure off. Um, but it's looking a little better for the Central Powers here all of a sudden. The Russian attack here may have been ill-advised, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, over on the Western Front, the French continue to creep forward, and the Germans are now, uh, trading space for time. Uh, hoping that they can uh, hold on for two more rounds, and that might bring the French right onto the Berlin's doorstep. But they'll have a quite a large force by that time. They'll be able to push back pretty hard. Uh, up here, you'll see the German fleet uh, actually came from nine down to eight, and they wiped out the French fleet, the two battleships and a cruiser. Um, or two battleships and two cruisers, and the Germans had... Uh, 
they had seven ships uh, firing and uh, they did okay but they're down to the damaged battleship which is probably going to die this next round. So the British built a battleship and three transports and have uh, basically put the uh, Kriegsmarine, the, the German High Seas Fleet I think it was called, uh, they put them on notice. Um, the British transport that was over here, instead of heading anywhere north, decided to come way south to Africa. So they're out of range of the uh, German battleship. And the German battleship cannot go anywhere where it will not be sunk this next round. Because, of course, America is now in the war, being turned four now. So they did their build. And uh, like I say, I like to hold on to the money, so you're only doing one build at the end. And so they built their five transports, four men, four artillery, and they got the stacks together. So they're going to be bringing over 10 units this round. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. The, uh, the Western Front is very interesting, though. I know a lot of times people play and they say, you know, if Germany ever gets kicked out of France entirely, then uh, that's it for Germany. They can't recover. But uh, I'm not so sure about that. I think there is a, there's a good possibility that uh, if Germany can, can wind up here, this is the end of turn three. We're going on to turn four. So if they can get the Russian Revolution declared uh, probably next turn, uh, that's plenty of time to get things going back this way. So we'll see what, uh, what people can come up with here. And when I say people, of course, I mean me because I'm the only guy playing. But uh, that's, that's pretty much the overview of the board. Um, interested to see how well the Germans can, can do here, if they can hold, or if they'll get uh, wiped out entirely. I think Munich is probably going to get wiped out. There's only six units there. But the French, uh, as <clears throat> untouched as they are, they are, they're still not an unstoppable force or anything, and uh, the Germans uh, can marshal quite a bit. We'll take a look at the, uh, the numbers now for the money. And once again, I neglected to add things up. So let's just switch hands here. And we've got 44 and 26, 80. So we've got 101. So that's a pretty big jump there for, or is it 91? Uh, let's see here, 4, 8, oh, 91. See, we're on spring break, and I don't teach math. So it's a double whammy on me. So 91, and over here, 72, 82, 102, 114. Yep, yeah, so the Central Powers are definitely up. They were at 82 last round, and these guys were at 122, I believe, and they've fallen a bit. So uh, we'll see what happens here on turn four. Um, but if the Central Powers can stay up close to 100 bucks in income, um, they should have the ability to, to hold things steady until Russia gets punted. Now again, we look at Russia, and they only make 10 bucks uh, this last round. Uh, they have 20 from last round, but they lost so much real estate in the last uh, turn. Um, losing all of this in, in one round is pretty, pretty nasty. Well, they lost that, and that, and that, and that. So they've dropped quite a bit. So uh, we'll see what happens here in on turn four and uh, see if the Italians can play a little bit of spoiler against the Austro-Hungarians. Just a little addendum. You'll see Russia's actually at 13 here. Uh, forgot about Galicia that they owned from Austria-Hungary, uh, which just fell to the Austro-Hungarians. Spoiler alert. We'll see you in a second. All right, round four is done. And Russia has one shot to salvage life in this. Well, I shouldn't say that because, of course, they have the revolution, you know, become Soviet Union. So they'll still live just uh, <coughs> instead of under the yoke of the Tsars, they'll be under the yoke of the hammer and sickle. So uh, essentially what needs to happen here is on Russia's turn, uh, they need to destroy all the German units that are in Moscow right now. And mathematically, absolutely can do it. Likely? No. If they do, though, they have a chance of holding on uh, almost indefinitely because Germany doesn't have that much follow-up. And as we look over here, France is charging hard. Uh, they've now 
uh, turned the Ruhr into a non-territory for the Germans. And the British went and landed up here uh, in Kiel. So that's uh, kind of put a bit of a dent between the front lines and the replacements. So obviously the Germans will have to take care of that uh, very shortly here. The uh, British, uh, or pardon me, the French have also got a nice stream of traffic moving up and it's turn four of course so the tanks are are there now and the Germans built some tanks of course uh, tanks if you don't know absorb a hit uh, they defend horribly with a one but they attack well at a three and uh, yeah then we have Austria-Hungary here got kicked out of Italy so Italy was able to uh, retain her border and with uh, this minor French threat up here in Munich uh, the Austro-Hungarians will probably have to take care of them because the Germans have uh, some severe problems up north right now. Uh, Austro-Hungarians built some tanks and men this last turn. Uh, looks like uh, you know Italy's a little resurgent here, so we'll have to wait and see if that uh, turns into anything. Down here in the south, the Ottomans, sensing the Russian Revolution is about to happen, turned south and took Persia because it was empty and uh, also put the put a real stomping on the British expeditionary force here in Mesopotamia. Uh, really, really laid it to them. Uh, got into their artillery something fierce. So uh, not looking good there for the Brits. They also lost Arabia. They lost Transjordan. And there's really not much left here that's uh, coming back. So uh, Britain built everything in India. So they built a number of men, a couple of tanks, and uh, the artillery there. So they'll probably be able to take care of the Persian force. But I think this Mesopotamian one is in uh, in some bad way here. Uh, in Africa, everything's down in the corner now, and I'm pretty sure that the Germans are, are done. But they'll wait. They'll let the uh, Allies attack them. They'll hold on to that uh, place as long as they can. Uh, the Americans have uh, brought over 10 units here into Morocco and they'll be sailing through. Uh, I thought heading north didn't make a lot of sense considering the British have that all pretty well in hand uh, and the French have a lot of breathing space now so I thought it might be better to come down this way land maybe unopposed somewhere or someplace where it's not going to cause tons of problems and put some pressure on the Ottomans and Austro-Hungarians that way. Uh, but beyond that, not much else to say. This is the big story. So if the Russians on their turn can't dislodge all the German units, they have to get rid of every single one of them, uh, then the rule for the Russian Revolution has been met. And if you're not familiar with it, it's right here. I'm not going to read the whole thing out to you. But if you look at the bold, uh, these three things must be met. Three or more territories adjacent to Moscow are controlled by the Central Powers. Well, it's definitely three or more. In fact, it's all five of them. As you can see, they're all controlled by the CP. At least one other original Russian territory is controlled by the Central Powers or contested. Well, of course, we've got that one and that one. So there we go. And Moscow is controlled by Russia or contested. All right. So I guess, yeah, at the end of this, there you go. So they're just going to collapse here probably. So having Moscow controlled by Russia or contested, uh, not sure why it's in there. It should just say if Moscow, well, I guess, yeah. But it's turn four. This is the first turn it could have happened anyway. I think there might be some errata on that. Uh, the only errata I have came out in 2015, and it doesn't say anything about that. But uh, I think that, uh, yeah, unless they roll the daylights out of this, eh, I think they're, they're hosed because if... It says Moscow is controlled by Russia or contested. I think the reason for that might be then that if maybe the uh, Central Powers have come through and captured Moscow, you can't have a Russian Revolution. I guess that's probably why it's written that way. All right, so turn four. Uh, there we go. It's all good. We're going to be looking at turn five here right away, and uh, we'll see what our turn. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that was the end of turn four. We're on to turn five now. All right, we'll let you know what's going on in just a moment.
and just the end of turn four economic situation here. Uh, yeah, you can see that the monster is in via, in fact, France. When's the last time you saw that in this game? Uh, so yeah, France and England are one two, and then you've got Austria Hungary outpacing Germany right now. Um, but once this Russian Revolution happens, folks, everything's headed to the west. So the French and the British are going to have to push hard to try to get Berlin uh, before that happens. And as you can see, the grand total economics are getting closer, not further apart. So the Central Powers is uh, not doing too poorly here. When Turkey's making 26, that's a good sign as well. All right, turn five, coming up. Well, this is the turn that Russia will decide her own fate. As you know, we are probably going to have the Russian Revolution here. Uh, unless the Russians kill everything in there, the Russian Revolution will happen as the other uh, necessary uh, steps have been taken by the Central Powers. So what I've done is I've collected the dice already. This is what Russia will roll, and this is what Germany will roll. So numerically, the Russians can kill all the Germans, and the Germans cannot kill all the Russians. So, there is that possibility. The greens, by the way, represent the uh, threes. So that's the uh, artillery, and then the tanks that are upped by the artillery, and any infantry that are up by the artillery. And then the three black dice are for just the artillery that don't have any, or pardon me, the infantry that have no artillery support. So here we go. So they need twos. So, it's not a very good roll uh, at all. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is dreadful. Yeah, so out of all those dice, uh, they only got six hits. The Germans can withstand that. So, one, two, three, four, five. And you have to keep an infantry in there. So, they will lose an artillery. So, that's that. So, yes, the Russian Revolution is going to happen. We'll see how many uh, Russian troops remain after this this battle and these guys will of course will not be placed now they actually I've used the wrong color for them color chip but they're just beside that so force of habit all right here we go so this is the German roll looks to be a lot better because the red by the way uh, are fours because the Germans do have air supremacy so the artillery gets raised up to a four or less and so they got a whole whack of hits here uh, so we've got 5, 10, we've got 12 hits with fewer dice. So again, we must leave one of those in. So we've got a 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, and then the tanks will take two hits. 9, 10, and then we have 11, 12. Forgot about the tanks. They, they uh, absorb a hit. And so there we go. So yes, the Russian Revolution is now going to happen. So this territory will remain what is called contested. And if there were any other contested territories, the Germans would have to keep troops in them in order to keep um, ownership of them. So they couldn't, or not ownership, but keep them contested. They, in order to maintain, they have to keep that guy behind. The uh, interesting problem now is that when this artillery goes to move here, you're going to have to move at least one infantry there. Because artillery can never be alone in this game. There always has to be one infantry present. Um, so, uh, Germany now is going to be able to take... There's not a lot of strength left over here now. But now they can focus everything on this side. And as we've seen, they are getting pushed by the French. But now, having taken Russia, or forced Russia into a revolution... Um, that will make that job all, all the more easy. So, we will um, uh, get back to you with the remainder of turn five. We'll see if the allies showing up here are, uh, you know, with the Americans coming in now, if that's going to have enough of an impact to uh, get the Central Powers uh, back. I think Britain is going to have to work really hard here to keep the Ottomans tied down. Um, but the French might be crying for help very shortly. Uh, the Italians are kind of in dire straits too, so we'll see what happens. The Austro-Hungarians had a really good turn. were able to liberate all their territory, and they sent everything west because they figured that the, 
that this would happen. And it was a good, good figuring. All right, we'll let you know what goes on for the rest of turn five in just a moment. Well, here we are at the start of turn six, and as you have just witnessed, the Russian Revolution happened. So shortly after that, the Germans decided to send their fellows westward, and the, oh, the Ottoman would have done that. Anyway, we won't, we won't quabble about those types of moves when you're playing against yourself. Um, so the British uh, tried to dislodge the Ottoman from Persia and uh, did not do it. They got uh, enough hits that left still two behind and uh, they lost just a couple of units themselves thanks to the tanks absorbing two hits. They didn't force the issue in Mesopotamia but neither did the Turks because they are definitely on a defensive footing now, uh, especially with that uh, fighter sitting in there. But the British just didn't have the horses. They've only got, you know, five units in Mesopotamia. So they're not, that's just suicide. So they're not going to do that. Uh, but they did marshal everything here in India and will be uh, starting to clamber forward with those big old tanks. Uh, the Turks responded in kind by building a little armor of their own and a fighter, uh, trying to help out their uh, beleaguered nation a little bit. But with Russia gone, uh, the Turks can focus pretty much solely on Britain. Now, they can't match Britain's entire economy, but that's where the rest of the Central Powers should kick in uh, up north and maybe force the British up there. In the south, these Germans, these plucky Germans, well, the, the British, or the, pardon me, the French attacked first with four infantry, got no hits, but got hit three times. <laughs> and then the British came in. They had six dice, uh, or eight dice, pardon me, Nope, six dice, and uh, lost three infantry in that attack and only killed one German. So I think the uh, Entente might just say, eh, you know what, Germany, we're stopping you from getting that single dollar. And it certainly isn't worth having Germany uh, kill the rest of this stuff and then start spreading out again because that's the last thing Britain needs is to be uh, nickel and dime to death in Africa. So I think uh, they just might not worry about it. Uh, over here, the uh, as we saw before, the Ottoman had a, or pardon me, the Austro-Hungarians had a great turn, recaptured most of their territory. They're up to 33 bucks now, and uh, yeah, they're they're much healthier. Uh, Italy is feeling the pinch, but here comes Uncle Sam, ready to uh, force the issue here in Italy, bringing over 10 fresh units, and there's four more. Hot on the trail, and of course, four more will be following suit. And that's basically what's going to happen now, is the Americans are going to be bringing in two artillery and two infantry on the regular. And uh, we'll see if that is enough to staunch the flow here. Uh, up north, the Germans counterattacked the British in Kiel, could not dislodge them. British were left with one infantry. Uh, here in Ruhr, things are desperate for the Germans. As you can see, they're down to four units, and the French can definitely overwhelm them there. And a steady stream of French reinforcements continues to pour through. The French also took a few other things here that I'm sure the Austro-Hungarians are going to uh, liberate for the Germans and probably be able to force uh, some fresh troops up north and uh, maybe stop the French from heading around the territory. Uh, the German uh, war effort has now been hampered by a very poor economy. And we'll just turn that down a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the Germans only got 23 bucks last turn. So they're really going to have to work hard to, to get that going again. But with some help from the Austro-Hungarians and the Turks, who are pretty healthy. If the Turks are over 20 uh, on turn 5, turn 6, uh, that's... That means that they're doing their, their bit. Uh, the Allies here, France is at 40. When's the last time you saw that? Uh, Britain took a little bit of a hit there, and they're down a bit, but I'm sure they'll come back. Italy remains at 12, and the States, of course, is at 20. So you can see that uh, they're 28 bucks apart on their uh, income tracks. But the CP, I think if you added it up, probably has... Uh, it's tough to say, actually. France is doing really well, but 
I don't know if it's enough to keep the uh, or to be able to bust into to Berlin because they're definitely going to get pushed out of these two territories beside Berlin this turn, and after that it's uh, it's just going to be a big slugfest. Uh, and for the Central Powers, they're hoping to push them back towards Paris, but uh, we'll see if they've got the horses to do that. Uh, Austria-Hungary might say nuts to this, we're going to go after Italy, and then we'll have a good old three-on-three -three game. And with the Americans having to come across the ocean, I think the advantage would definitely tilt towards the uh, Central Powers at that point. So, uh, not much else going on. I think I've reviewed everything that has happened. Um, yeah. I'm actually debating any sort of naval activity with the Austro-Hungarians uh, because this single transport here, being able to drop off in Albania, ties up stuff a little bit. Plus, they got the bombard with the battleship, and so I'm thinking it might be might be time to build some subs here and go at. I don't know if that's worth it, but then they can threaten Rome directly as well, which might keep some Italians home a little longer than they'd want to be. So. A lot of options there. I'll uh, contemplate this as I go. Um, and as always, in any of my videos, leave comments below if you think I screwed up or if you think there's a different tactical move that could have uh, fared better. But uh, this game is far from over, and we'll be heading into turn six right after this. All right, at the start of turn seven. We haven't quite begun it yet, but we'll show you what's going on. So down here in the Middle East, the British were able to defeat the Ottomans in Persia, but the Ottomans were able to defeat the British in Mesopotamia. And so the battle lines are well and truly drawn here. Uh, good stack on, on uh, the Ottoman side, but the British now have six tanks in Persia. So when they move in, the first six hits that the Ottoman get, the British can ignore. So I kind of got to give the advantage to them, but the Turks do have the artillery or pardon me, the aircraft, so the artillery goes up to a four, but there's only three of them. Uh, the Turks abandoned Arabia, because in my mind, I'm just going to be dropping off. They just had an infantry in there, and then I've got uh, two transports here. I can drop all this stuff off right here. No bombardment, or pardon me, no artillery, because there were none, and they can just take it. So I might as well move over to Transjordan, I figured, to save them. Uh, you might see that the Ottoman cruisers are gone. Well, what they did was they sortied out to the Med and tried to attack this. They got by the minefield, no one hits, uh, but then they rolled fairly poorly. They got one hit on the first round, but lost their cruiser. Lost one cruiser on the first round, and the second round they missed, but the Italians did not miss. They were trying to soften it up, though, because the Austro-Hungarians built a battleship and it looked like there was no chance for the Italians to survive, but of course the Americans have arrived with their cruiser and battleships, so now it's... Yeah, it's not quite as even a fight now. Now there's only one hit to be taken here, so there's one, two, three, four, five, versus one, two, three, four, five. Anybody's guess as to who's going to win, and if the mines get lucky, well, the Austro-Hungarians might not do it. But the real reason I did that was to force the Italians to leave some stuff at home from now on, a little bit back. And so the Italians, sensing that this might happen here, I figured it might be uh, prudent to bring some things back. The Americans landed here, of course, and they've just kind of stayed there. They're going to be a blocking force. Uh, further to that, the French, instead of moving to Picardy to get to the front faster, they actually came down here because I wasn't sure what this turn was really going to look like because this might be something to attack. Because uh, if they do attack it, well, it's, uh, yeah, could just go. It's, there's 14 units there. Um, and we'll see, we'll see what happens with all that. Um, what else we got here? Okay, up here in the north, uh, the Germans were able to take Kiel back with authority. The uh, British and French were able to take the Ruhr. That's worth six, as you can see. It's a spicy meatball. So the French are doing pretty well in the economy again. Uh, the British took all their troops from here, which is only four, and they built five more. Uh, and the French built, yes, you guessed it, six tanks. Um, they're going to want to absorb a bunch of hits coming up here, and the Germans have a good stack of tanks there as well. I have friends who play and they never build tanks. They say it's a waste of money. When you're on the defense, it's the only or a one. Um, 
the only attack at a two unless you have the artillery support then you get the three um, but for my part I really like slowly building up a stack of tanks and if I can get up to 10 or 12 tanks uh, it takes a lot to hurt that stack <laughs> Uh, you're going to have to run into 35 guys before you start feeling any sort of real pain. Um, have the uh, artillery support, of course, crank them up to a 3. But on defense, yes, they only roll it a 1. Uh, but, after, you know, since they're absorbing hits, I, I count that uh, as quite the bonus. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Do you build tanks in this game, or do you just go, uh, no, I'm going to build two men instead of one tank? They attack twice as well. There's two things to hit. Yeah, there's lots to lots to debate over that. I just like the tanks, um, and they did, as we know, uh, help the British push through in a number of sectors, and the French pushed through here and there against the Germans. And when the Germans built their own, they were able to push through a bit. So, and of course, World War II tanks are king, you know. Of course, till the air power comes along. But anyway, I digress. Um, not much else going on. The American transports are headed back pick up some stuff that's the last of the American troops that have been built so they're gonna have to uh, focus on enough stuff that these five will be able to pick something up on the next time and I'm sure they will uh, but beyond that the African front was very quiet nobody tried actually no I did I thought to heck with it and I rolled the three dice for the British got no hits and then the Germans replied and got no hits nothing but fives and sixes uh, so <laughs> I was kind of risky. I don't think I'm going to do that again for uh, on behalf of the Entente. Um, yeah, not much else going on here. Uh, pretty status quo. Oh, totally forgot to do this battle. Well, let's do that right here. This is what happens sometimes. So there are only 10 here. I thought there should be 14, but maybe I just can't see. That's because I landed them over here, and we will have the bombard, but we also have the artillery. So the Italian artillery is going to get a shot at a three uh, to see if they do any damage, and the battleship is going to get its shot as well at a four. So there is a hit, so one of the American infantry will die. And then the battleship gets a shot at a four and misses. Oh, this is all of a sudden an interesting little battle. All right, so we're going to have a two and two threes for the Americans and then two threes for the Austro-Hungarians. So the black is a two, that didn't work, that didn't work. So we got one hit. Of course, you gotta lose the artillery. And then there's two back at three. Okay, one hit. And we gotta lose an artillery, so. Oh, well, that's uh, about the best that the Austro-Hungarians could have really hoped for. They're only losing one, one unit, and the territory, though, is now being contested, so they're going to lose a couple of bucks there. So we'll uh, we'll redo the math and we'll show you what that is uh, right after this moment. Put that Italian battleship up to right again. All right, we'll let you know what the economy is thanks to the Albanian excursion. All right, after recalculating, the Central Powers are at 84, and you'll see Germany continues to lag behind where she likes to be. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to change an awful lot in the next little bit. But uh, we shall see. The French up to 42. Oh, uh -huh, c'est bien, oui. And uh, time for the red wine and croissant, I think, to be broken out. Uh, and they're sitting at 109. So there's uh, 25 bucks now between the two powers. Okay, on with turn seven. Turn eight has been pretty great. Actually, that was turn seven. We're at the start of turn eight. So turn eight should be great. Er. Okay, I'm going to stop rhyming. I'm not sure if I actually started rhyming, but down here in the Middle East, we have a very interesting turn of events. The Turks came into Mesopotamia after the British had uh, gone into Sevastopol and took that, killed the lone Ottoman there. And the Turks came in here and just wiped out the Brits. The Brits had a stack of six tanks, and of course they only defended a, at a one, and I think a couple of them actually got hits. But the air power, having these cranked up to fours, and having a good stack of troops here. Uh, yeah, and then they, I think they had 25 dice, and they got like 18 hits. So even with the six double hits, it just, they 
clobbered the Brits right out of there. So now the British, who had built this intending to, uh, to go in here, we knew that this was going to be a tr uh, problem though, so I decided to build it down here. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a problem. But there's something interesting here now, because the British can come in and scoop up these territories, and there's no one in a place to really stop them from doing that right now. Uh, as we know, this German cannot leave the contested territory, and so that means that somebody's going to have to turn around and deal with these four little guys, because of course they move before they do. So they're going to be heading out here and taking one, two, three, like this is seven bucks that they'll be taking on the next turn, and nobody can stop them. Uh, so, and then the Ottoman have to decide, are they going to head up there? Are we going to send these guys over once we deal with the American? Like, what's going to happen? So, we'll see what happens. The British did take Arabia. I didn't take the bait with the Ottomans on this one. I thought I'd get a little bit more powerful and then come down. Um, but we'll see. I mean, again, the British have a lot of reinforcements here, and they're still out producing the Turks almost two to one in money. So as as bad as this looks right now for the Brits, they can put twice the stuff down and just keep them at bay. Uh, had a little bit of a kerfuffle down here. The British decided what the heck, let's go for it. They had a, an extra French troop there and they actually got uh, two hits out of three and then the Germans came back, got one hit out of three. So uh, yeah, we'll see if maybe the French will take a shot at them next round, we'll see. Uh, as you may have alluded to already, the Americans uh, got beat up a little bit here, lost, a, lost their artillery, and so they're just down to one man, and the AH will probably take care of them next round. Uh, Rome is under siege as the uh, Austro-Hungarians punched in hard, and they've got about 13 units there and three of whom are tanks, so it's kind of like having 16 hits, plus they got two aircraft, so Rome might fall this round. In fact, uh, well, there's a lot of stuff there. They'd have to get hits on everything, I think. So it probably won't fall, but a little bit of trouble. The Americans decided to cut the flow of reinforcements there by taking Venice. And so the Austro-Hungarians are going to have to deal with that before they head towards Rome. Now, Italy's only making 10 bucks now, so uh, that's not going to bode well for them. The British, making a royal pain of themselves, take Kiel once again. Didn't suffer any hits on the minefield. And uh, so the Germans will have to deal with that. But there was a big dust up here in the Ruhr, and the Germans gave better than they got. Um, but the French, as we know, just had so much stuff there. They're down to two infantry, but they still got about 15 uh, artillery. And then the French came in here to Alsace and really beat up the Austro Hungarians, who then only got two hits, I think, because of all the tanks in there, taking all the shots for them. So. These tanks are in there, and these tanks are there, so... But we'll see what happens on this round. I don't think Austro-Hungary is going to try to attack that, um, but we'll see. Oh, wait a second. No, these tanks are in here. These tanks are in here. Yeah, because they took the, the hits, the two of them. Uh, got a couple more coming in behind here, and a whole stack, six there. And the French moved into here, hoping to apply some more pressure there, so... Uh, Italy might have a little bit of life left, but uh, we'll see. Again, even if, if Rome falls, that's not the end of the game, because for the Central Powers to win, they must take Paris or London. So this is, this is going to go on for a while, folks. Not exactly sure, but this is uh, pushing the longest game I've ever played to this. I think I got to a turn 10 once, and we're just about to start turn 8, and there's no way it's going to end before then, so... Um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, not sure what else. The Americans, just as I had mentioned before, sending a steady stream of guys over. Um, they'll be sending over six units next time, though, because they didn't need to build any boats this round, and they won't next round. So, as these boats keep shuttling back and forth, uh, we'll might build it up so we can have three or four transports per load by the time the game ends, and hopefully that'll be enough to hold off the Central Powers. But Central Powers, of course, uh, yeah, they've, they've got some problems, but they've got the means to deal with it. Let's just hope the dice uh, make it a good game and not a, not a disappointing ending. So, all right. Well, turn eight is about to begin. Oh, the big, big story here, too. See German planes? Yeah, 
they shot down all the French planes. So the French, on their turn, built a couple of fighters to replace. Because with that stack of artillery, you want them shooting at fours. Uh, they won't be doing that this round, of course. But uh, in the next round, if they're still alive, uh, they'll be doing that. All right, we'll see what turn eight brings. See if Rome is still here. All right, turn eight is in the books. Gearing up for turn nine. Take a look down here in the Middle East. And yeah, the Ottomans were going crazy. Just about dislodged the British. Just needed a few more hits and they would have, but Persia remains contested with fresh British troops on the way. So that might not end the way the Turks want, but they did get Sevastopol back, but the British went and grabbed, like we knew they would, some territory. Now, of course, they've got this little expeditionary force that they've sent out to go and take care of this, but uh, it obviously is pulling troops away from the needed west. But let's take a look here. So the, the Austro-Hungarians actually had to pull back and take Venice because the Americans had landed there in some force and, uh, and had wrested it from their control. And had they pushed on to Rome, they likely would have lost and now been further away from help. And so I decided a pincer move might be better. It's going to take an extra turn, but uh, it's going to give them a little bit of time. Plus it drew in more French reinforcements, which are now desperately needed up north. Uh, we'll talk about the Brits first. They're here. They only lost one guy in that battle. The Germans were rolling seven dice at two and only got one hit. And the British came back and got... I think they got four hits, or three hits actually, three hits, but all were soaked up by the tanks. So uh, so nothing really changed there, the British went down one troop, uh, transports went back to pick up six uh, infantry from this build. Uh, the Germans really put the boots into the British and French forces in the Ruhr. Uh, it's highly unlikely the French will... Uh, withstand this uh, next turn. They only have three units in there, so uh, the Germans are marching, folks. Uh, it's looking pretty good for them right now. Of course, the French do have quite a bit of stuff here, uh, but they've kind of stuck their nose into Italy, where they may actually need to withdraw and come back and look after the homeland. Um, here in the Middle East, again, I forgot to mention Italy came over here just to be cheeky. Smyrna was empty. I saw it and I thought, for myself, as a, a player of any sorts of Axis and Allies, I hate having to back up. I hate having to turn around and fight things uh, as it takes me away from my, my goal for that round. And so I thought, what would be more annoying than to have some Italians land, but to also have some Americans land? So now there are six units to be killed, and even if everybody here got a hit, that's only five hits. And uh, so they're going to need to pull from other fronts. Meanwhile... Uh, the British uh, brought down a transport, brought a tank and a man down to Egypt. So now they've got they've got an opportunity here. Um, again, the Ottomans are in the money. Uh, this last round they made three, or 25 bucks and they had saved some. So they got 27 for next round. So I don't think they're in that much trouble, but they're, uh, they got to be careful here. Uh, down in Africa... Uh, I'm not sure if I covered this last time. I think it, I think this was last round. The French attacked, lost, and died. And then the British attacked, and they only needed one hit, and they got it, and the German missed on the reply. So the British have uh, been able to successfully drive the Bosch, I hope that's not a bad word, out of uh, Africa. Just like Merle Streep and Robert Redford. I think those were those two. Anyway, a long time ago. Uh, yeah, so this is a real mess here. Lots of German stuff, though. Not much French in the north. And uh, we'll see what happens here. I think it's a foregone conclusion. The Ruhr is going to be back in German hands here, and they need the income. Um, yeah, they've got a lot of guys there. They've got uh, 17 infantry. They've got about uh, 10 artillery. They've got six tanks. So they're doing all right. And then they've got all this artillery here as well. So, you know, match those two up. And that's going to be quite the stack headed towards Paris. Again, it's still four turns away. And that's if they don't get stalled. So, uh, again, not a foregone conclusion. I think a lot of it is going to hinge down here uh, as to how well this goes. Because if Britain can take care of this and pour everything into European defense, uh, that will be... Uh, 
that will be a big boost to the French, and it might be just in time, but we shall see. Uh, America took Spanish Morocco, and they lost two guys doing it. You may wonder why, but uh, what we did when we landed these Americans over here, uh, I figured what we need to do is have them get into Spanish Morocco, so now that the two that are here can go one, pick them up, and two, bring them back. Uh, if they were out here, it would take two turns. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, and there's six more infantry that got built, and they're ready to come on over next round. And that's pretty much it for the board. Uh, the French did get alsace lorraine back, or Alsace anyway. Um, they had Lorraine. And uh, with, with some force. And the Germans won't be able to knock them out of there anytime soon. So... Yeah, we'll see. There's still lots of game to be played. But this whole uh, Russia first theme thing seems to be working out right now. But lots of dice to roll yet. All right, we'll let you know how turn nine goes in just a minute. Uh, sorry, I neglected to show you the uh, money board here. Uh, again, Germany really suffering, but they're going to get the Ruhr and that'll bump them up to 30. So then they'll be back on track. Uh, Austria-Hungary lost a fair bit of stuff, uh, but it's still plus four on the day. And of course, the Turks are plus seven. So they're doing okay for a total of 77. And France has uh, slowed down a little bit, but uh, still doing all right. The Brits are up at 44 after that cash grab they had. And you'll notice I've got an oops. I've had a 10 by Italy. It should have been 12 uh, when the Americans took... Venice back from Austria-Hungary, that should have been popped up to a 12. So in case any of you saw the 10 and noticed that uh, they were only should have been at 12, there you go. My apologies. But uh, at the end of turn uh, 8, it's uh, 77 to 115. Uh, so still, uh, still kind of hangs in the balance. All right, here we are. Turn 10 about to start. And let's head down to the Middle East again. Well, big mess, big mess, lots of death. And uh, Persia is still up for grabs. Um, of course, uh, Britain spent some of their build here, but they spent some more at home. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, Turks are still moving things up to the front, but this is a real problem. When they attacked, they only got one hit, and one Italian died for it. And uh, that's all they got. And so... He decided to just build some numbers here. Well, that they had chosen to, to put that in there before, of course. Um, but I think they figured that they might not clear everything out and they'll just need more bodies. And the tanks should stop any kind of real injury from happening. Now, they did lose one man because uh, the uh, defenders got three hits, but the tanks absorbed two of those. So uh, Down here, the British came across the Suez and attacked. But uh, nothing uh, was decided. They inflicted some casualties and received one on their own end. They got two hits against them, but the tank absorbed one. The uh, British transported these fellows up here. And uh, they're obviously going to be headed towards Turkey. Uh, up here, Austria-Hungary had disastrous start to the turn. They sent these two fellows in to Ukraine to clear Ukraine out and everybody missed. The Brit got a hit, but of course the tank absorbed it. Down here, there was only one Brit in there, and he uh, and the Austro-Hungarian man, well, the man and the artillery fired, two at three, they both missed, the Brit hit the artillery and killed it. And then what happened was, the Brit that was here, it was, it was British territory, moved into here, because he was in conflict, and then the guy that was in here could move into here, because that was contested as well. And so... That was uh, kind of what they did there, and hoping for the British that they can survive. The Americans came over to Albania, so they have taken everything they had out of Italy and dragged those guys over from Africa and forced a landing here. Lost one guy, but killed two Austro-Hungarians. So Austria-Hungary now has, uh, they're fighting essentially three different uh, armies right now. The French, the Italians, and the Americans in some force. It's not a huge force, right? But when there's nothing around you, that's a big force. Uh, up here in the north, Austria-Hungary had a disastrous round in Piedmont. 
they attacked and got absolutely nailed. Like it was ugly. They, I don't think they got a single hit. And then the French counterattacked and they brought in six uh, artillery to help out with that. Um, and this time the Austro-Hungarians did get some hits, but they, as you can see, this stack is gone. And they had a healthy stack there. Uh, so they're down to two units. Um, but they do own Venice, so those men and that artillery can go in there and attack if they want. I'm not sure they want to. They might just go in to uh, bulk it up a little bit. Uh, the Germans, of course, got Ruhr. That was a no contest. And Kiel, that was no contest as well. They didn't uh, withstand any injury whatsoever because there were only, I think, three or four French units, and he's got that many tanks. And there was five British units, and he's got six tanks. So, uh, yeah, those tanks can be pretty daunting. Uh, over here, the French have decided to uh, bring things together and form a good defensive line. The British are bringing over six units a turn, so by the time they get to Paris, there should be another 18 or 24 Brits, to say nothing of all the French that are going to be there. So I think we could be in for a real slugfest, uh, and that's the way the game was intended. I'm just not sure if it was intended to go 10 rounds and be a slugfest, or that'll be about round 14 or so by the time that real slugfest happens, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we know the Americans came over here, they sent some other boats back here, they took Spanish Morocco, we know, and uh, they've got their build over there, and they're making a little bit of sweet coin now, and uh, once again, I have neglected to add everything up. Uh, the Central Powers is easy, that's 80. Uh, let's see here, so, well, it could, it's going to end in a 5, has it changed actually? Maybe it hasn't changed. So we got 23, 34, that's 69, 75, oh, it's 105. Has it really dropped that much? Nah, let's do that again. 3, 4, 10, 15, so it's a 1, so 1 plus 3 is 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I guess it has. I guess it has. Well, Italy has dropped a bit, and uh, I guess uh, Great Britain was up in the 40s there not too long ago, so... So there you go, 105. I hope I wasn't adding in correctly before, but obviously we do this by uh, by the nation. So, so it's 25 point uh, spread here. Uh, the Turks, though, are definitely going to be losing some, um, just because of what's going on here. Uh, I'm not sure if they if they lose a foothold over here, it's the British are just going to sweep through. Uh, but we'll see. Lots, to, lots of dice to roll still. Lots and lots of units. I'm really enjoying this game though. I think uh, next time I have buddies over to play this, I might ask to be Germany and try to go for Russia just because this is, this is exciting stuff. All right, we'll let you know how everything turns out. Just a minute. All right, turn 10's in the books, headed towards turn 11. And we'll come down here and we'll see that Persia is a nasty battlefield, but the Turks really got the bad end of it there. Uh, the British inflicted a number of casualties, I think five, four or five casualties on the Turks, and the Turks inflicted zero on the Brits because they got five hits and the Brits have five tanks. Now the Turks have three of their own tanks there, which will help, but uh, the British, of course, have a small reserve ready to go here. And plus now they can land behind their lines. I'm not sure if I'll do that. I think they might just need the help right here to smash this. Uh, up here though, things got kind of crazy. The uh, Turks ended up being able to grab all this territory here in the past few rounds. So that's seven bucks for them, which is about a third of their economy. Uh, the Brits down here, remember there were two Brits and one AH? Well, they got each got one hit against each other and so the Brits ended up taking the territory. Uh, the Americans moved further inland with their little force there, and it's going to cause the AH to, uh, if, if they don't split, then they'll have to uh, take two turns to get Albania back. No blitzing with these tanks, holy cow, you could out walk them. Um, over here, the Italians just continue to grow the stack, although they did sand a couple of guys down here along with their guy that was in Egypt. Um, and you can see they own Transjordan because the British fought the Turks down to one infantry but couldn't finish them off. 
And then the Italians landed, and there you go. On Smyrna, a convincing victory by the Ottoman. They have, uh, what is that, 10 units plus a fighter in there. And so they, they match up pretty well against this force here, but uh, we'll see what happens. This is going to be a huge battle this next round. If this goes really well for the Brits, uh, yeah, Turks are going to have to make some choices that nobody likes making. Uh, Austro-Hungarians pulled out of Piedmont. They just didn't want to keep fighting there. They left it for the French, so the Italian economy rebounded a little bit. Uh, and they set up shop here. And they didn't want to go into Tuscany because uh, they wanted to have their reinforcements with them. So they've kind of mustered everybody together and then have a push. If they had gone in there, there's a good chance France would have hit them and Italy would have finished them off and AH would be a uh, third-rate power at that point. Up here, uh, the Germans went into Holland just because it was in the way, and uh, they didn't get enough hits. <laughs> they only got two hits, and so the, uh, the Dutch are holding on, um, although not long for this world, I don't think. And they, of course, inf could not inflict any casualties as there's just too many tanks. The Brits built a couple more transports up here as well as a fighter, and so they'll be able to land more next round. And they now have 12 guys on the continent. Um, to go with the French's, so oh, they've got about 40 guys, they got about 17 tanks, a few artillery, and they got this small force down here, but I think I'm going to leave that there as a block to Austria-Hungary. Um, yeah, we're going to see, uh, see what happens here. The Germans definitely loaded for bear, um, but the stall tactics and uh, whatnot, and the British can land behind their lines, uh, I don't know if I'm going to try to come over and maybe drop some guys in Prussia um, because they have to survive one, two seasons with minefields and I don't feel like throwing away guys quite yet. Maybe if these, uh, these lines uh, firm up a bit, maybe we'll try something like that. Something crazy. Um, the Americans continue to bring guys over. They got that convoy system going on. They got eight guys ready to come over. Next uh, turn on those four transports, that'll be a little bit uh, bigger of a punch. So if the Americans don't start getting killed off over here, you know, they could become kind of a growing concern. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see uh, if they're able to be dealt with. Um, I thought AH would be able to punch through to Italy by now, but the help that France gave uh, really stalled that. Actually, it stopped it in its tracks. And then again, one well two horrible rounds of rolling and the entire Mer er, uh, <laughs> Austria Hungarian um, force was just destroyed it was just horrible they're down to a, a man in a tank I think we saw uh, also down here you know um, I think there's a good chance that if Britain didn't build as much as they did in India the Ottomans would have taken it by now um, they have built a ton of stuff down here so who knows, maybe uh, the rules of only allowing, you know, four things, you know, I know they're house rules. In the book, you can build as much as you want, but that, I think, might just help CP out a little too much. I don't know. Hard to find balance in some of these games, right? Because you can play ten times and uh, still have arguments with people as to what to do about things. And I'm sure there's people right now pointing at the screen saying, you can't build that much stuff there, but... You know, at least this turn I only built three, and I think last turn I only built four, so that's still within the house rules. Um, can't build ships, though. So I haven't been able to build ships. This transport here came from all the way around and brought the guy up eventually, so. He came from Canada. Holy cow, this guy's from Canada. One of these transports. Good grief, what a, what a trip. Um... That's pretty much it though. The, the Germans, uh, they took Belgium because there was nobody in it and they took Alsace because no one was in it and uh, now they can push forward. They've got a good amount of tanks there. I think they got six tanks in that stack and six tanks in that stack. Uh, so if they can get those guys together and push forward, that's 12 hits that just don't count. Now the French have the same thing over here, a very similar thing. Plus they have a little bit more infantry, not as much arty. Um, but the British are able to reinforce them as well. So it's going to be interesting how the next couple of rounds go here in 1914. Stay tuned, folks. We'll let you know how it all works out. And once again, I forgot to show you the board. So there it is. Germany definitely on the rise. 
Austria-Hungary is kind of sputtering. The Turks have vaulted up there, but you know that they're cheap gains, right? They've got real nothing there, and the, the Brit can steal three, and Will's probably still three away from them. i uh, definitely got to move guys into there because they don't want the Brit taking six from <laughs> Austria-Hungary. So, uh, yeah, so the Turks are going to be heading down a fair bit this round, I suspect. Uh, if we look at uh, France and Britain, they're about status quo. Italy hanging in there. And uh, America, got the 25 bucks going. Oh, they should be at 26. No, 25. Serbia is worth two. All right, so you can see they're only 20 bucks apart now. We'll see if that has a telling effect in the next little while. All right, start of round 12. Good grief, this is taking a while. But it might not take as long now because the Ottomans have been vacated here. They've just got a single fella left there. They got one guy up there who just took the Ukraine, and they took Bulgaria back from that single Brit. Um, they got Smyrna, they got these ones here. They have lost the Syrian desert, though, to those plucky Italians who made their way across, and they landed two more in Transjordan. So now there's five Italians, there's four Americans, and a bunch of Brits. So, uh, yeah, Constantinople is even under threat uh, because the Americans landed some more guys here. And so they are actually able to bring, well, pretty much everybody and attack Constantinople next turn. So knowing that, I'm going to have to buy some stuff to defend that. Probably throw in some more artillery. They get that free shot on amphibious assaults. So that's about the only way I can stop that from happening. Um, of course, Austria-Hungary is going to snap up Romania here. And they'll probably take Serbia out this turn. Over here, I uh, don't know if they'll have enough to take out the French. I think the French only have four or five things there. But if they keep rolling as badly as they have, Austria-Hungary might be there another turn. Um, plus, they're going to probably take a couple losses. I don't know. they got three tanks, so maybe not. But the Italians have moved up into Tuscany and are ready to do some sort of a crazy stunt there if they see an opportunity. The Germans have pushed further into France, have taken Lorraine. And a lot of guys, but the French and the British are definitely outnumbering them now. Uh, so the Germans may have to stop for a round and retool, wait for these guys to get to the front. Because if they try it with this and move any closer to Paris, uh, they're going to get crushed. There's just way too many infantry stuck in and around there. And they'll just be stuck in there for three rounds, just get whittled down and then have nothing left. Um, so I think it's best if Germany just put on the brakes and uh, bring these guys to the front. Not to say to give up territory, but uh, yeah, not to sit right next to Paris and Picardy um, and get, get thumped on. Uh, but the Germans definitely have a good amount of stuff coming through, you'll notice. They've built a Panzer IV. And uh, they're ready to bring that to the front. Only got five tanks with Germany. I guess they suspected that'd be all you'd need. You notice how a lot of games kind of nickel and dime you on stuff like that? And you wonder, you know, how hard would it be just to give everybody, you know, seven tanks or six tanks? Or, you know, maybe don't give Italy just like three or something. But I don't know. It, it, I understand they need to keep costs down overall. But... Uh, Unless you're making 2 million copies of this game. And I mean, we all know it came out at over $100. Uh, you know, that's just the one thing that kind of gets me a little bit. Is that, uh, you know, you end up playing the game and have to substitute pieces because they don't have enough. It's like in Zombies when they didn't give me a British transport. And somebody else said the same thing too. They were shorted a British transport. Couldn't even do the setup properly. They had to go get another one. So, yeah. Sorry, a little bit of a rant there. But uh, for those people who, out, who are out there making games and whatnot, uh, you know, I know it's important to keep your cost down. I get that. But don't do it at the cost of uh, making people sour on your games because that's, that's not going to bring back repeat customers. So anyway, enough of the rant. Uh, so that's pretty much it that's been going on. And we'll, uh, we'll see what happens in round 12. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I'm not convinced that the Germans can do this. There's just... You see all the dark chips in there for the French and the British? They highly outnumber the Germans, like two to one in infantry, so 
that ominous music tells the tale. But we'll see what we decide on here in turn 12. Oh, gross dereliction of duty. I forgot to show you America's build over there. Some man, two men, a tank, and artillery, and they built one transport. But they're saving some money because they didn't have enough to build another transport load full. But we'll show you how the money's going on here. So a little while ago, it was 25 apart, 30 apart, all that kind of stuff. Well, we're down to 15. Only 15 difference between uh, the two sides here in 1914. Actually, it's probably more like 1918 by now, turn 12. But, uh, yeah, still slugging away. Germans are definitely uh, becoming more wealthy as time goes on. Austria-Hungary is kind of yo-yoing a bit. The Turks, I think, are going to be on the decline now. And uh, France on the decline. Britain might grow a little bit. Italy is near. And America, who knows. So I think the uh, Entente might be kind of at its high watermark at this point, uh, although it was higher <laughs> a couple of rounds ago. So they may have reached it and are now receding, but we'll see. It's all about uh, the Ottoman now. So if they can wrest control of the uh, of Asia Minor, then they'll have a chance. Uh, we'll find out what happens in turn 12. And the game continues. And as usual, we'll start down here in the Middle East. Britain has really solidified her place down here, so only built one artillery and uh, took Sevastopol with a decent force, knowing that there's not a lot of stuff that's going to be facing it. Um, I thought I'd bring over a couple of Turks here, but I think that, yeah, might have been a mistake. Austria-Hungary, though, took care of the Americans, so <coughs> they can uh, send troops this way. These are attached, so, uh, you know, I don't know if this how this is really going to work out. It might be a quick cash grab, but then they might all die. Ah, so be it. But we'll see. Because by then, Ottomans might be in trouble. Well, they're in trouble. Knowing, of course, that the Americans could land in Constantinople, I drew back some artillery and the stuff from Ankara, because it would definitely die next round anyway. So they withdrew. They still got their money for it, but then Britain uh, isn't going to kill them, and Italy got the money, because Italy can always use a little bit of money, and we'll find out why. Uh, Smyrna is a big mess. Um, I should probably arrange that a little better. Um, but there you have it. That's that's how that is going. Uh, Constantinople, any kind of a, a seaborne landing, uh, you're going to be taking five, yeah, five, you know, uh, shots before you even hit the hit the beaches. So I don't know if we're going to do that because. Uh, if you're bringing in six guys, you lose five of them. Ouch. Um, yeah, everything else here is cleared out. The Americans are gone. Where'd they go? Well, hey, they came up to Italy and put a spanking on Austria-Hungary. So the Italians charged out. They had that big stack. They had 13 guys. They charged in there, and they actually got seven hits. But because there were three uh, AH tanks, they only killed four things. But then the Americans landed with a bunch of other stuff and got a good number of hits uh, and the bombard and all the rest. So the AH uh, is a spent force there. Of course, they have uh, stuff over here that they can retool and head back, but uh, Italy can definitely take a breath at this point. Uh, the Americans brought over a minor force this way and uh, over here. There. Transports, because of this, their transports got a little stuck over here, so this steady stream of uh, guys is going to slow down to a trickle for a little while uh, until we can get these uh, seven transports back to the States. Uh, up here on the Western Front, the French slammed into the German forces and did actually more damage than they got. Uh, I mean, Germany looks a lot worse off than it was, but because I took, they have 16 artillery, I just took them down to red, dark red chips. But they did lose quite a bit of infantry, uh, no tanks, of course, and they didn't lose any planes. They did shoot down the British plane. Uh, and the French only lost nine, and the Germans, I believe, lost 16. So, the Germans can't afford to do that much more. Now, they do have some very strong reinforcements on the way here. Uh, and uh, I think it might even be smart to back up and come back into Alsace and form up there instead of trying to 
take that for it. They, they just can't attack that. So we might head back to Alsace here. I think uh, that might be the better part of Valor at this point. Um, the British actually built some tanks up here, spent most of their money, just as we know, built an artillery in India, but the rest of it went up here, and they're trying to become a force on the continent that can be they can be proud of. Um, yeah, Africa's quiet as we know. That's pretty much everything. Uh, gonna head back here and yes, I forgot to do the numbers again. So this is hard with the left hand. So I'm gonna switch out the camera. There you go. So we got uh, 83. Oop, a little bit of a drop there. The Ottomans, as you can see, have come back down to earth pretty hard. And I don't think that number is going to go up uh, ever again. But we'll see. I just don't see it happening. And over here, for the Entente, is 70, 87, 90, 110. So a little bit of a bounce back, I think by like four bucks or so. A little bit of a bounce back. And now you can see it's uh, 27 bucks between the two of them. So. Uh, but we'll see here. Um, I think Germany can still win this. Uh, if Austria-Hungary can get off its butt and get something done here, but it keeps getting dragged back to the west. And I think that that's always been my tactic in Axis and Allies games, and sometimes to ill effect, because sometimes I nickel and dime myself to death. Um, but what I like to do is, you know, make these big armies turn around. And so all this stuff here is there because the Americans landed. Had I ignored it and just carried on, who knows, maybe Rome would have fallen, but who knows, maybe Vienna would be under some duress at this point too. So, uh, again, I welcome your thoughts, your comments, uh, as far as that goes. Do you believe in these little spoiling attacks that I've been doing? Uh, because to me, they're as annoying as anything in these games. Um, pitched battles, you know, anything can happen, but when you've got to turn around, uh, it's pretty nasty. It's kind of like... Uh, how the Germans did World War I, where they would use half the troops to keep, uh, you know, twice as many busy, right? They'd set up a very strong defensive uh, area and just egg on the uh, French and the British to attack, and they would, but to very ill effect, and the Germans didn't need nearly the number of troops uh, because they were fighting a defensive action. Same on the Eastern Front. The Russians outnumbered them like three or four to one or more in some engagements, and the Germans just owned them for most part. Early in the war the Russians actually did okay but uh, then the Germans got their measure and, and it was pretty nasty. Um, anyway, yeah, I'd just like to hear your thoughts on that. Um, but I think the more you can do little attacks from behind the, the, the lines, the front lines, I think that really slows down the people who are supposed to be the aggressors here. But with a $27 difference in the total economies that could be telling and we'll see what happens here on turn 13. Do you ever have one of those moments where you say, uh, I probably shouldn't have done that? Well, I probably shouldn't have done a couple of things here, so we're going to talk about them. But uh, you can see the British have a renewed vigor for uh, stuff here. They've got three transports, of course, and we've got three of each, so they can drop to here or drop to here pretty quickly. Um, did a big attack into Ankara here with the Turks and got four hits, and none of them landed because of those pesky tanks. Whereas my own invasion force got shredded to the tune of, I think, four, four hits, something like that. Ill-advised, ill-advised. Uh, also did an attack down here. This one went much better. Uh, killed all the Americans and Italians that were there. Still some Brits left over, as you can see, but there's still quite a decent force here. So they're doing okay. But if you notice, the Italians have returned because I emptied out Smyrna to attack Transjordan. And uh, that's what happened. And then the Americans have come to bolster it uh, back up. So all the stuff that was up in Italy came over. And these fellows came over from uh, Spanish Morocco. So, yeah. Up here, decided to use Austria-Hungary to try to nip this in the bud. Um, and we'll see if that's a strong enough force. We've got to take, take this guy out, of course. Don't want him roaming around. Uh... So, not sure if there's enough there, but I didn't want to take too much, because I also had to put a blocking force here, because I didn't want the Americans landing again. 
And, uh, yeah, things are not going as well as they were a few uh, turns ago for Austria-Hungary. They had quite a force headed in. I thought, hey, they might end up, you know, threatening Paris. But, nope, they got whooped. And uh, the Italians here have now, I mean, it's just a wall of flesh. It's nothing special, but, uh, hey, this time they had enough money to start building artillery. They're actually, their economy is equal to America right now. So... There you go. That's kind of crazy, but that's just how things happen sometimes. Uh, main reason is, is they got six extra bucks here uh, that go on to what they normally make, which is 14. Oh, I guess America's got one more. One more than Italy. Got to fix the board over here. But America lost all of its holdings here in Europe, of course, and therefore is not... Uh, not much above its starting uh, wage. Um, yeah, so Austria-Hungary here, although their economy is healthier now, they're in the mid-30s, um, thanks to this, they do have to take care of this. If they don't take care of that, uh, whew, who knows what could happen. I think Constantinople will likely be contested next round. I, I don't know if it'll fall because they go before America and whatnot, so and Italy so I mean these British troops are tied down here and these folks here will likely be tied down and you know they'll probably win this territory so who knows I mean if they win this then the gateway to to Africa is open and then of course they'll have to do something about that so don't think the game's over but Constantinople definitely is in a bit of a bind uh, so Italy here is pretty healthy. The French are there. They're going to be able to move across and help out if Austria-Hungary comes in. The Germans did go back and coagulate everybody into there. And now they have a force that could possibly take on that force that's there. Um, but they still need some help here with these guys. So it's going to be kind of a race to the front and uh, see who can get there first. The French... Uh, sent one guy over there. Um, we'll see if the Germans take the bait and head over there. Head to Belgium and try to come down the coast. Uh, but as we all know, Lorraine is the, the key territory because you can hit all these different territories around uh, and really go for it. Uh, you know, if the Germans are trying to sneak by. Uh, another six guys built there. And uh, the Americans built some arty and some men. And of course they shipped over their that's kind of a nice uh, mixture there. You got all your land units in a fighter, so uh, a little bit of a nice landing force. Who knows? They might end up assaulting Constantinople. Actually, they can't. There's no transport there because they were used to do all this nonsense. So, um, but that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, not much else. Not much else to say. So your your big stuff for the Ottomans is here. Austria-Hungary and Britain are there, Austria-Hungary and Italy are there, and German and the Allies are over here. So, really those are the four hot spots. Everything else is kind of sideshow, kind of trades hands back and forth sometimes. This could turn into something, though, because the uh, there's about 15, 17 units here for the Ottomans. And if they punch through, that could be a real problem. We'll let you know how it goes here on turn 14. Okay, this is from round, end of round 13, beginning of 14. Yeah, a little bit of a free fall uh, for the CP right now. Uh, Ottoman is to blame for most of that. Uh, but Germany is going to have to get a little uh, aggressive here if they want to increase their economy because it is stalled. Uh, France is happy about that, so we'll see what happens. But you can see there's a 40-point gap now between the two. And uh, when Italy's making 20 at this point, that's not a good thing for central powers. All right. You ever get the feeling that you added wrong? Like, ever? So that's happened to me a few times here. But uh, I think last round I might have carried a one and I shouldn't have. But uh, Italy, by the way, some of you might have been saying, wait, they should be down three because they lost Ankara. And so I went back and fixed that. But yeah, so starting out here, things are getting from worse to worse, so it was 40 away, It's, uh, but I think I, I screwed up, I think it, I added wrong, I think it was 30 away, because now it's 34 away. Uh, but taking a look down here, the British came after here, 
And with all this stuff, got one hit. One solitary hit. They didn't take any damage. Well, it was just disaster. Uh, up here, kind of an even battle. I think the British gave as good as they got on that one. Uh, and so we've transported a couple guys up here to hopefully, hopefully uh, add some uh, oomph to that. Down here, the Ottomans were one casualty away from winning that. And the British preemptively, we moved stuff over here thinking that might be a thing uh, that they would win, but they missed it by one. And they still got a decent force here. They've got uh, eight, three, like 13 pieces down there, which is pretty good. Americans have landed over here, though. They brought a bunch of stuff. And they've also gone after Constantinople, which is now uh, surrounded and uh, is going to have some trouble uh, picking up uh, and carrying on. We did... Uh, oh, we do have... No, we... Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. I did change the board here, and the Ottomans are down to four bucks. So, because they have Tartarstan and Bulgaria. Bulgaria will probably hold for a while, but, uh, yeah, who knows? It's, uh, we'll see. The Italians came in here and were able to actually take out a couple of, uh, Ottoman things to make the British, uh, attack a little easier. Um, not much else here. Oh, yeah, the Italians came in here into Trieste, the stack full of guys. Uh, did do a ton of damage. Killed three guys, I think. They lost, like, six or something, but that was worth it. Um, just to tie up another four bucks for Austria-Hungary. The French came over to help out a little earlier on, bulk things up. The Germans did go to the coast, and they uh, joined forces with a bunch of stuff there. I don't know if you can see all the dark circles under there, and that stack of tanks, I mean, forget about it, right? That's, I think there's 15 or something in there. That's, um, you know, so the, the French have to hit hard to do any damage. Of course, the French have their own stack of 16 tanks, and the British have another three in there, so... And the French built another three, but the Germans have another three, or, and they got six there, another one there, right? So, yeah, I think, though, the clock has, uh, it has almost ticked by the point of no return for Germany. I think they need to attack this round, because uh, mathematically, I think they're starting to fall behind uh, with the amount of stuff that's getting put on the Western Front. And as soon as that starts to happen, it's, uh, it's curtains, so... Uh, we are going to, uh, well, we'll show you over here. We got these uh, eight units over here for America that will be heading probably uh, directly into Constantinople, uh, depending on how many artillery are still there. But they only have 10, uh, ten bucks to spend um, because they lost this after they got their money. So we'll see what happens there on the next turn. All right, folks. Uh, hey, thanks for hanging in there. We're on... The turn, going on to turn 16 now, I think so. Anyway, craziness. We'll uh, talk to you in just a second. All right, turn 15 is over, and we've had a major development. And that is the Americans have taken Constantinople. And they took it convincingly. There really wasn't uh, much for the Ottomans to do. Uh, they still have a... A minor force down here of about uh, 12 or 13 things, but uh, they're bottled up with the British. And uh, that's a big that's a big thing in this game, is that if you can tie up people's forces so they can't move, uh, and then you can scooch around them, that's, uh, that's pretty important. The only way they, these guys can leave, in case you're wondering, is if any adjacent territory they had friendly troops in, or was a friendly territory, then they could disengage. But because these are all unfriendly zones they're stuck there until they can destroy the British or they themselves are destroyed uh, more likely now um, but yeah that's uh, that's it for the Ottoman and I don't see anybody coming to their rescue this is just too much oomph and uh, so they lost their four bucks that's all they had left and the, the Americans scooped that of course um, yeah Pretty crazy. This is uh, the, the British reinforced it a little bit here. They didn't have enough to attack and they lost a couple in the in the battle that the Austro-Hungarians did at the start of the round. British got two hits back but of course were absorbed by the tanks. So the British thought they'd bulk up a little bit here. And uh, 
That should hold off the Austro-Hungarians from going anywhere, and if not, well, hey, we've got four tanks right there. Um, over here, Austro-Hungary uh, beat up on the Italians, but there's still two left here in Trieste, so they still got two more to kill. Uh, they could, of course, move up here, and they probably will, and then these fellows here can move in and take care of them. So the French will probably die in there, and then uh, they have a good chance at a push towards Rome, of course, the Americans have all these boats that they can just pick up all these guys and bring them over. So, I uh, don't know if that's going to work too well. Uh, the British, little cheeky move here, came through. They did lose a transport to mines and two men, so pretty costly. But uh, this will give the Germans a moment of pause as they have to turn around and deal with this nonsense. So, um, yeah. I just saw the opening, I thought, well, shoot, let's try it, and that uh, kind of worked. It'd be better to have six guys there, but, uh, yeah, there you go. Unfortunately, for these transports to get out of here, they've got to roll for that zone, and then they're coming back, they got to roll for two. That's why they died, they had to roll, uh, roll for two zones, and one of them just didn't make it, so. Um... Yeah, I think it's it's down to now for the Germans. I think they have to they have to just go for it now, and we'll see what happens. Um, still not convinced it's a good attack, um, but they're 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 getting a little bit of strength, but not as much as the French and British can put in uh, tandem. So that'll be uh, that'll be. Uh, Something they'd probably rather do sooner rather than later. I might throw it on the battle calculator and see see what's what, see if there's even a hope. The Americans, of course, uh, didn't have any transports in place, so they had to ship some guys or some boats over there. So they have nothing to punch with except this gigantic stack. So, which is more than Italy has on the board right now, I think. So, <laughs> um, oh yeah, and Italy took Albania because why not? Those are those guys that were in Smyrna. They had nothing to do, so they headed over there. All right, so that's uh, that's it for round 15. We're on to round 16 now, and I think this will be the round where we find out if it's uh, if there's a hope, or if the Central Powers have once again bit the big one and have to uh, tuck their tails and limp away in shame. We'll let you know in just a moment. And just a little exclamation mark on the, uh, the last round. Yeah, you can see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, we're 55 apart now. So it's, um, yeah, things are not too good for the uh, Central Powers. We'll see what happens, though. They're, they're probably going to go up in money this round. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if they can kick Italy out of the war... I think they might have a chance to salvage something here, but uh, that'll take at least two rounds, if not more, if they get held up. All right. All right, heading into turn 17. Uh, well, not a lot has changed down here. These two had a battle, and nobody got any hits. Oh, and some of you may have been screaming at the screen, you can't put just tanks alone, and you are absolutely right. I had put a stack of four tanks here, and I forgot to place an infantry there. And then I moved three or moved one tank here and three tanks here, and I didn't have any infantry. So I took away one of the tanks and put an infantry in each spot, and there you go. So, there, I fixed it. Um, my bad, though. And this is what happens when you are uh, playing alone and you're heading into hour... Oh, it must be hour seven now, hour eight. And, uh, yeah, your brain kind of messes things up sometimes. But here we go. I speak only of myself, of course. You may have a perfectly functioning brain after eight hours of uh, trying to deal with every country on the board. I do not. Uh, here we go. We have the Ottomans here. Big attack. Once again, the British hold on by one. And now the reinforcement is there. And I think that's going to be it for the Ottoman on this round. I think the British will finish them off. Up here, Austria-Hungary has moved in in force. They have got a ton of stuff and some tanks even to back it up. They took Trieste back. Uh, the Italians, a little cheeky, went and took Serbia. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a good idea. It's only two bucks, and they probably will just get crushed here. Um, but we shall see. 
Uh, the Americans, of course, have moved up, so anything Austria-Hungary sends, the Americans can crush. So I think it's a race against the clock right now. I think Austria-Hungary needs to go 1-2 and take Rome. I think that's all there is for it. I don't think they can really uh, beat around the bush here. Of course, they may send that stack to France. So we will see um, what's the best idea there. The Germans have moved closer, but they didn't attack the big stack because it is a unified stack. And they thought they'd come here, and so the French left Burgundy open, and uh, the Germans will probably head in there. And again, the French could attack, but only with their stuff, not all that British stuff. So uh, mathematically, the Germans would win if the French attacked solely, but if the Germans attack the joint British-French group, then the uh, defense would win, the French and British. So that's where we're at right now. So I think we're going to keep slugging away here. We'll see if we can get uh, some uh, action here um, on this next round. I'm not sure if it's smart to do. Uh, the Germans had to go back and take care of those Brits there, but they did it. And then the Brits sailed their two remaining transports back and built a couple. And now they got a bunch of guys to bring over each turn. The Americans have some more forces coming this way. And they've got eight forces in Spanish Morocco and all the transports they need to bring them up here to put a crimp into their style. Of course, it is only eight. It's not a ton, and these folks are now out of transport range, but I think this is a more effective use of them at this point, is to come scooting through and uh, just take up all this money that's sitting there for free. So heading over here, we're gonna take a look at the board. Surprisingly, even though the Turks are gone, They've gone from 64 to 73 bucks. The uh, Austria-Hungary had a nice jump, which only means then that this has dropped. Not sure how far. So that's a three, eight, nine, what? It was 120, oh, yeah, because the States is up huge. All right, so it looks like 123, so we're 50 apart now. Uh, just gonna make sure I did that right. Once again, I'm a tired, so it's 13, so one, eight, nine, yeah, that's right. Okay. Hey, Common Core Math, I'm not gonna take all the time to do that. I'm just gonna carry the one. Much easier. Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? Don't let my bosses know. All right, so there we go. That's uh, it for turn 16. On to turn 17. 17 happens to be the number of my favorite hockey player of all time, Wendell Clark. I have a jersey with his number on it. It's an old, old, old one. Um, but, yeah, we'll see if uh, turn 17 is going to have any cataclysmic event in it. Uh, I'm sensing that turn 18 might be the, the final straw, but we will see. All right, turn 17 is done. The stalemate continues down here in Sevastopol, which was uh, historically a tough place to crack. And so it has remained so, even though the Russians aren't even in this one. Uh, down here, the Ottomans have breathed their last. Uh, they actually got a few hits in, even though the British had tanks. Uh, but the British rolled very well and were able to wipe them all out. Uh, up here, the Americans went into Serbia but uh, only got enough hits to leave one Austria-Hungarian standing, so they didn't collect the, the two bucks, but they did steal Romania. Italians bulked up Albania. Uh, Austria-Hungary brought some tanks back here and built, built their uh, stuff in there. But Rome here is in some trouble and uh, had a decision to make. I had a bunch of American troops and what should I do with them? I decided to bring them up here because even if Italy falls, even if Rome falls, uh, it does. It's not a game ender. But if Paris falls, that's uh, that's going to be probably a game ender there. Uh, if Fran all of France's money goes to Berlin, that's going to be it. So uh, then we have, you know, Rome might be sacrificed here. And, uh, and I think back to many political decisions that are made in the past. And they always use that little term, for the greater good. And I think for the greater good, we're going to put the Americans here. So if the Germans uh, get into Paris and they end up in a bit of a stalemate there, the uh, Americans can maybe bolster the defenses a little bit. Um, we'll see. 
I also thought maybe we could come in behind here and take care of these reinforcements so the Germans only have this. So it's, uh, it's a gamble to be sure and uh, this will be the, the turn that we find out if, uh, if it was the proper gamble or not. Um, I'm going to head over and look at the money board. And I did the central powers already, but I haven't done the allies here. So we've got, uh, it's going to end in a six. One, three, seven, eight. Oh, one, sixteen. Yeah, they've been losing a little bit of money here and there as the uh, central powers go through Italy and go through France. Uh, I took a little bit back, but uh, yeah. 45, 90, yeah, I think I added that correctly. All right, so we will see if turn 18 uh, brings us to a point where we can say that's probably it. Um, the Germans, of course, uh, came into Belgium. The British landed here uh, because that's pretty much the best place to land at that point. Hopefully stall the, the German advance on the flank, uh, but we'll see. Uh, just might be buying a little bit of time here. All right, and you might be wondering how to get all those guys into Berlin, but remember we had a bunch of guys back here, so I just moved some in. Of course, I left a detachment behind in case I feel like getting cheeky with the British again, but right now I think their forces are definitely needed on the Western Front. Well, we will find out very shortly what will happen. 18 is finished, on to 19, and heading down here, still cannot finish this thing off. The British are rolling horribly here, even with the strafe, even with their artillery shooting at a four, and then they got seven other things to shoot with, and they can't hit a bloody thing. Well, I guess they got a couple hits last round, but that took out the tank, because uh, you got to leave the infantry behind. Uh, not much else going on here. Uh, the Italians... Oh, kind of funny. It's like movie soundtracks, right? Sometimes they're nice and quiet and somber and whatnot, and then kaboom. Um, so here we have uh, the Italians. There were two of them in here. They came in here hoping to kill the Austria-Hungarian, which would free the Americans up to hit this smaller force. I thought that would be a good move, but the Italian missed. Both the Italians missed. The AH guy hit, so down to one Italian. And now... Austria-Hungary can bulk this up with their reinforcements before they try to take on these Americans. Uh, so that was kind of a fail. Uh, Germany, I've decided to send a little bit of stuff, just a trickle down here, because there's just a trickle here it's causing all kinds of grief. And the Germans could really use a little extra money uh, to bulk up the home front. Uh, worried about the Brits coming around. Rome has fallen. Rome has fallen, and it fell convincingly and uh, got a few hits, but with the four tanks there, it mitigated the damage. And uh, I had wrote it on the board over there that uh, if I, last time when I showed you, I hadn't put the uh, Italian build on yet. But yes, I put the Italian build on, and there's some men and a couple artillery, and uh, that just didn't, didn't stop at all. So maybe the Americans should have come down here, I don't know. Um, but... Honestly, Austria-Hungary has to retain quite a force there because with all of the American power floating around, um, it's uh, unlikely that uh, Austria-Hungary would be able to hold Rome unless they leave a sizable contingent there. So it'll be interesting. I'll have to figure out what to do with that considering the Americans have now moved in here and uh, Piedmont and uh, a little bit into Marseille and they moved up into Burgundy. Uh, the Germans moved uh, into uh, Paris, and they had a real slugfest. They gave better than they got, actually. The French and British took about, I think, about 25 hits. I think it was 20, 27 hits. And the Germans only took about uh, 14 hits, I think. So, I mean, hey, if Germany can keep that kind of rolling going, they'll be fine. They'll whittle that down in about eight years. Um, <laughs> but... That's, uh, hey, that's part of the fun of playing trench warfare, isn't it? Uh, but as long as Paris is uh, contested, it's not cranking out six bucks around for the, the Parisians. Uh, the British did an amphibious assault here into Belgium, and uh, it 
was somewhat successful. They did lose uh, five guys. Um, they lost three to the initial uh, artillery bombardment, but then uh, killed three of the artillery. So with the next round, they might be able to do something. Of course, here come the German reinforcements. So we'll see. I neglected to use the British battleship because, once again, when you play by yourself, sometimes you forget those things. So I'm going to have to move that over. Uh, the Americans have brought over eight troops here, and there will be another 11 coming by next time. Uh, lots and lots of transports, as you can see. Now, something that I have thought of uh, for this next round, and color me crazy, but I think it's actually a, a good idea for the Central Power, is I think Austria-Hungary is going to build some subs. Uh, the reason for that is, is that if, honestly, if they can clear out there's only uh, four cruisers and three battleships and if they can clear out this then all of a sudden the allies are gonna have to spend a ton of money on ships to protect all these transports coming from America and America is making some pretty good cheddar right now uh, I'll head over and show you the the map of the money so you see the central powers at 79 America has 41 bucks uh, I mean, most of that is because they're gobbling up all this cheap stuff here, which will be taken away from them in short order. But uh, that's a pretty good scratch for them. Uh, let me just do up the, the totals here. Okay, we're switching hands again here. All right, so I'm not ambidextrous. Ambit, I can't even say the word. Okay, so it's going to end with a four. One, oop. Dropped a fair bit here, it looks like. All right, because France has taken it on the chin. Italy's gone. And as I showed you, I'm going to put the Italian build on. All right. So uh, it's only $25 separating them now. They were about 40 or close to 50 separating. So times they are changing. Uh, I still think the Entente has uh, a better shot at winning this. But uh, I'm going to see if this sub build does anything because... The uh, Entente can build no ships anywhere down here at all. The closest they can build a ship is up here in France, and I guess they can build one in Marseille, but I don't think they really want to build ships right now. <laughs> I think they need to protect their capital. But we'll see. We'll see what we see, and uh, we'll see what Austria-Hungary does, and see if that forces anybody else to do something about it. All right. We'll show you what turn 19 brings. 19, yeah, you heard it here first. Uh, what turn 19 brings in just a moment. Well, I'm on the last face on the D20. So, uh, yeah. And honestly, uh, it's not looking resolved at all here. Although the British have finally solved Sevastopol and uh, have a very healthy economy at 47. Uh, and the British are moving up and had to buy some infantry last round if you remember they were in India and then shipped them over because this whole stack here is pretty much frozen as far as hopping on transports goes because we need to have some infantry wherever they land one infantry and so if he takes off right so you can see the dilemma that we're in um, America finally got Serbia freed that up Austria-Hungary took Romania back, of course, being empty, and they were able to marshal their units here in Budapest. And, of course, they didn't build an awful lot here, just 15 bucks worth, because they spent, holy cow, 36 bucks on there. And you say, Lord, they have 51 bucks. Well, their economy was 39, and they got 12 from Italy. So we're going to see. We're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do the attack here, and you know that sea battles go until they're done. So if this is successful... Not only will it wipe out the warships, it'll wipe out all of this and essentially close off the med to all of these ships. They can only go here uh, and drop off there, of course, until subs go over there and kill them. And these three British subs might not be long for this world if this goes Austria-Hungary's way. If it backfires and the Allies win, uh, we might, well, I don't know if we'd call it, but that would be close to packing it in. This is a big battle. This is going to happen... Uh, right now because uh, Austria-Hungary's got a ton of tanks and it's got 12 men and a couple of artillery and the plane 
So it outnumbers the Americans uh, by a fair margin and has the air superiority, which honestly only helps out two, infant, two artillery, but what the heck. The Americans did land in forests up here in Piedmont, but uh, the Austro-Hungarians in Tuscany uh, are ready for that, so that's going to be a good tilt as well. Austria-Hungary is definitely going to try to wipe that out. I don't think they'll be able to wipe it out, but they'll probably take it down far enough that it'll be a fairly anemic force at that point. Up here, I thought, you know what, instead of having to keep guys in Prussia all the time, let's put a battleship there, because then anything that comes in not only has to fight the mines, but has to fight the battleship. So that means the British would have to bring in a battleship. And as the British player, I thought, well, shoot, let's not worry about that anymore. Let's just start pumping stuff in here. So we took Picardy back for the French. Uh, the Germans uh, took Belgium back, of course, for themselves. And uh, we had two big attacks here, one by the French and one by the British. And both uh, inflicted some casualties. You can see the German stack of infantry has gotten considerably smaller, but so have the French and English. Uh, these tanks, I tell you, um, they're doing their bit, but everybody's rolling the lights out. The big thing is that the uh, German uh, air superiority, all these uh, artillery here, these German artillery are firing at four or less. So, And uh, on defense, of course, they'll fire at three, except for the tanks. Tanks only fire at one. They haven't been doing so well, but uh, they do absorb hits. So there's that. So it will be an interesting uh, round 20. Hey, it's a good thing I'm on spring break. My son is three provinces away and my wife's off at work and nobody's sick. So there's that. But uh, we'll see what round 20 brings. This, this is huge. I think this year is going to be one of the more important ones because if the Austro-Hungarians are successful here and wipe out all the Americans and then the Germans will take this guy out, uh, then all of a sudden there's pressure on India and Constantinople may in fact get liberated and bring the Turks back into the game. So, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll find out very shortly. Uh, I think a lot of it hinges on this sea battle, folks. If this goes well for Austria-Hungary, the Allies, the, the Entente, pardon me, the Alliance, uh, is, uh, is going to have to pour some money into uh, ships and they'll, they'll be coming from USA and possibly Great Britain. So and that'll, that'll change the, the feel of the war considerably if the Central Powers can control the Med. Whew. And I thought this was going to be like six or seven rounds. Well, nuts to that, eh? I don't know if I'm a good player or a bad player now that I'm at 20 rounds. Uh, feel free to comment below, but be nice. And the war rages on, and uh, it took quite a turn, uh, this turn, is that a way to do it? it took quite a turn this round. Uh, British have moved up, they're fortifying Constantinople because Bulgaria has been taken over, briefly. Um, but the Americans here uh, got wrecked. Uh, there's only five units left, the Austro-Hungarians only need seven hits to take them out. And that'll be it for the Americans on this side. They just simply cannot, cannot get anybody else over here because of that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Med now belongs to the Central Powers, which changes the feel of the game immensely. Uh, so these British troops here, uh, who were looking like not a bad force, are now up against this steady stream coming down here. So it looks like the British may have to, in fact, start pumping more things out of India, uh, but we'll see. I'm not sure if we're going to actually resort to too much craziness, uh, but next turn Austria-Hungary is going to grab this, and that'll close the Suez. So that'll be whoever owns this gets to go through, and that'll be Austria-Hungary. So these transports will be kind of stuck here, but they were here, and if they stayed here, uh, they're, they'd die so at least on this side they can maybe uh, zip down I don't know we'll see um, at the very least they can get these troops over to Mesopotamia real quickly uh, the Americans got uh, belted pretty hard over here and but uh, held fast and decided not to attack because uh, well 
that wouldn't work out too well uh, against an entrenched defender who has air power. Germans stretched out, got Marseille, came up to Picardy in Belgium, and they, they took all this stuff back. Um, the British had to land up here in Brest, or Burgundy, what do they call that these days? Brest, I guess. Yeah, Burgundy's down there. And Bordeaux is where the Americans had to land, of course. They had to come around the side because if they came here, well, they're dead. And if they sit in 14, they're dead. Uh, the Germans also built a sub. I figured, you know what, let's push the issue a little bit with these Brits and see if they'll move out. So the battleship moved out, and they built a battleship and two subs. That'll probably stop Germany from spending any more money on naval units. Um, but it certainly slowed down the British war effort, because they only built one guy in London and then those six in India. France just built a few guys here, but they also built a plane. Uh, hoping that the next time they have a tilt, maybe they'll get lucky and they'll have air superiority, which would do very well because they've got uh, a good number of artillery. Actually, no, they don't have a lot of artillery, but it'll stop the Germans from using fours for their artillery. But the Germans have a steady stream going on here, uh, coming down the pipe, so you have to be careful about that. Americans had to build some stuff, so they built a couple of battleships and a couple of subs, uh, just because if they want to come back... Uh, down south here anyway, they're going to have to build that stuff to protect. Even if they don't want to come back south, even if they went north, uh, I suspect these fellows here, they're going to repair for free and off they go. Some of you may have wondered, how are the mines in here? But there are no mines because the port was captured by Austria-Hungary the turn before, so they can come out here and not fear any mines. Uh, the first round, their subs, they had six subs and they got four hits. And their battleships got hits, and the cruiser got a hit. So seven hits uh, they got on uh, nine dice. And uh, that that spelled the end right, right there. You tipped three battleships, and then the four cruisers died, and that was it. So the next round, everything got finished off. Um, they, As you can see, they killed three subs and damaged theirs. They got five hits. It's respectable, but um, yeah, subs are... Subs are cheap, so, uh, you know, compared to these other things. The other thing about subs that you may not know is that they can ignore warships. Uh, so, the one thing about this here, the reason I had to move the British fleet over there is because this sub could have gone, one, underneath the battleship, and then two here and sank all those subs, if it survived the minefield, of course, um, because they can ignore warships. So... Had to move the transports out of the way. All right. Well, it was looking really bleak for the Central Powers just a couple of turns ago, but here on turn 21, uh, they have some options, and I'm I'm not totally unconvinced that the Central Powers can't win this. Not sure if I used all of those double negatives properly, but I'm positive that uh, there'll be some big battles here. We'll let you know how they turn out. And in case you're wondering, there we go. It's only a $10 difference now. Uh, Germany actually pulled in a bit more, but they're down to 50 by this point. And the, uh, the French had a little bit more, but they've lost a few things. Oh, no, 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 because Germany's the last power to go. That was something I wanted to point out to you, actually, as we look at the things here. So we have Austria, Hungary, then Germany, France, Great Britain, Italy which can still go because they still have a couple of units left on the board, although that's going to end very shortly. So you can see it's Central Powers go and then the Allies. And Central Power and the Allies. So we'll see if there's anything that can uh, can happen. You know, Central Powers getting to go 1-2 and then 1-2-3-4, although this is not too powerful. And this has kind of been stalled. So who knows, maybe 1-2 against these guys might uh, weaken the pressure on Paris. We'll find out. It's only $10 difference all of a sudden. Uh-oh. Round 21 is over. Round 22. Here we go. Well, at the end of 21, the British have had to dedicate more resources down here as the Central Powers continue to push south. And there's not much that can stop them. The Americans have been brushed aside. Although they did have one moral victory, taking Belarus. So, yeah. 
they're being a little persnickety, and that guy will survive because there's nobody adjacent who's able to move. Because as you know, the, anything that was contested when the Russian Revolution happened, the Germans have to stay there. So, well, at least one thing, and they moved everything out before and headed west. Um, yeah, so Constantinople has been bulked up a little bit here. Uh, but, I don't know, that's a lot of tanks. You're not going to do a lot of damage to that stack. They've got, I think, nine tanks, eight or nine tanks in there. So, you got to get, you know, a dozen hits just to start to get into their infantry. And we're not even rolling 12 dice. So, or maybe we are just barely, nope, 11 dice there. So, could be difficult. Austria-Hungary has taken Egypt, now has the ability to zip through to Africa. So the British are hightailing it out of there, and uh, but needed to push these guys up here. There was a debate. I thought, you know what, maybe I'll bring some troops down here and just stall. But that's just, I think, a waste of resources at that point. If Austria-Hungary wants to nickel and dime down here, they can go for it. Uh, we'll let the Americans save the day, and we'll show you how they're going to try to do that in just a moment. Uh, they did hold here in Piedmont, but that's uh, not going to last this round, I don't think. They did uh, take Marseille away from the Germans. Put that back up there in Burgundy, because uh, there's only one German there, so that helped out the French a little bit. Had uh, another huge battle here. The Germans only lost, I want to say, Seven units, whereas the uh, the British and the French uh, lost a lot more. They were up around 28 or something. So uh, it's really telling, though, the air power. So the French, in an attempt to balance that out, bought a couple of fighters. They did shoot down one German fighter on the first round, but on the second round they got shot down. So and uh, so the Germans still have two fighters there. Um, the British bulked up the Royal Navy here. I thought it might be an idea to come over here and start putting some more pressure on Germany. But I think that uh, this is this is the whole whole deal here. I don't think there's much else to be done for it. If this cannot be salvaged by the Allies, it's obviously it's over because Rome has fallen already, and so they need to grab Paris now. The Americans put everything into battleships and subs and are going to sortie on the next round. Now, of course, I know this, so my Austro-Hungarian fleet will uh, probably stay right there, but we'll skedaddle after that. Again, if uh, they're able to, uh, it looks like they're going to take Constantinople and sweep through Africa, they'll have the money they want to spend and build fleet, uh, well, it's got to build it here, but build a fleet in the Med. And uh, then America is fighting a losing battle because Austria-Hungary is making more money than they are. And the Germans are now king of the hill, as they ought to be in this game, for part of it anyway. So as we look here, I actually did the math. So it's 84 to 97. That's 13 difference. But some of it was pretty cheap, cheap money. So that was a freebie. Uh, this was a little sneaky little freebie um, and so that's going to disappear that's going to disappear that's going to disappear uh, and that'll be it for Italy then they'll be out of the game officially unless their Rome can be uh, recaptured by the Americans um, yeah so this is going to be taken by Austria-Hungary on the first round boom um, they'll take Bulgaria, they'll take Albania, they'll take Trieste. So they're going to be uh, going up quite a bit in, in money. They're going to be up around 50 by the end of this round. Uh, the Germans do need to take care of this crazy yank running around, though, and they're a step behind. So he's going to be able to take this and take this, and there's nothing anybody can do about it uh, except just chase him until he can't go anymore. Now he can't take Finland. And he certainly can't go into Moscow, so but he's gonna have some fun as he runs away from his pursuers. Um actually, no, Germany's gonna be able to get him here, because he's gonna Germany's gonna go here this round, and then next round they'll get him. So Alright, sorry, getting a little tired. Um Yeah, not much else to say. 
That western front's a big schmoz, but the stacks are definitely getting shorter, especially the French and British stacks. They are dropping uh, much more quickly. And on the odds calculator now, the battle calculator, uh, the Germans have become, I won't say heavy favorites, but I think it's about 55-45 that the Germans uh, will continue to win this. And of course, the battle calculator I use goes to the end of the battle, not just the first rounds. Um, because you can only do one round in this game, but I kind of take that as a sign of things to come. All right, well, round 22 is about to start. Wish me luck. Turn 23. Well, what's happened? Well, we'll come down here. Yep, the Americans did that kind of cheeky, but hey, can't blame them. Uh, the Germans and the Brits continue to fight over Ukraine, and some British reinforcements on the way, but will they be there in time? We shall see, because they may get cut off by the Austro-Hungarians here, and the British spent everything in India. They refused to go away, although they did go away from Constantinople, because there's no way they were winning that battle, and, uh, I figured it'd be better to come back, regroup with a ton of stuff, and then come back, try to take it back. Not sure if that's correct or not, but the Austro-Hungarians uh, landed in Transjordan to scoop that buck, came down to Egypt and to scoop that one. I figured it'd be better to come down here because taking Italian money has really only one dollar swing, whereas taking all the British and French stuff has a two dollar swing per dollar, if you follow my meaning. The uh, sub stayed here because the transports went over here and the Americans have come over here with some major brute force. So probably won't stick around there. And that will allow then the landings to commence again. Unfortunately now because Rome is taken, everything that comes in has to roll for uh, mines. And that's uh, that can be a real hazardous situation, so you want to be careful with that. Uh, here in Paris, the French Air Force, one of their planes survived and the, uh, they shot down the other um, German plane. So yeah, they did better this turn in that they only lost three guys and they inflicted zero casualties on the Germans because of all those bloody tanks. Uh, they got a goodly number of hits, but not enough to do a lot of damage, or to do any damage. Plus, uh, but now they built four more artillery, hoping that those fours will do a little bit more. Uh, there is a gap, as you may have noticed in the last round, there is a gap in the German reinforcements that the British may be able to uh, exploit, but on this round we just landed everybody over here, and uh, yeah. The Americans liberated Burgundy and the rest of them headed back to Bordeaux where they may be joined by that conglomeration. Uh, we shall see. I think that's pretty much it folks. Obviously Constantinople will be liberated and the Ottomans will be back into the game. They'll have no money of course to start. And when Austria-Hungary does this they'll actually be giving up Oh, no, they won't, because that's, uh, that's not original Ottoman territory. But they will give up this $1 for the Ottomans. The Ottomans will come in, and they'll have 7 to start, possibly a little bit more, because these two will definitely be taken by Austria-Hungary. Um, whether or not Britain decides to smack back, I'm going to have to do some math and figure that out. But Austria-Hungary is also moving towards Paris, although if these guys charged in, they would all die and inflict no casualties. So... I doubt they're going to actually go into Paris. They might just try to mop up anything that lands. Um, that's how that's going to go. Uh, the American got up to Livonia, as we can see, but he's probably going to die. But you never know. They might throw sixes and no problem. Uh, but the Germans spent a lot on rebuilding their air force because they don't have one. So they built four fighters in Berlin this round. Well... I'd like to say this would be over by turn 30, but you just don't know. So here we are, turn 23. Oh, I need a sandwich. Round 23 is done, and we're going to paint a mildly bleak picture here. So you see the central powers are up to 104, and they are $25 ahead of the Allies, which is not good. 
And uh, one of the big reasons is that Ottoman are back in. They don't have anything yet, but they got 10 bucks. So they'll be uh, able to spend that. The British, again, built a ton of stuff down here. These tanks are really ruling the day now as they... Uh, they are absorbing a ton of hits, so if you if you have five tanks and you walk into a place that has maybe seven or eight units defending, it's a good chance you're going to walk out unscathed. So uh, tanks are are becoming the uh, tour de force here in the 24th round. Uh, so speaking of which, the uh, Austro-Hungarians continue to rumble around Central Africa, um, but the Americans have come over in order to hopefully put a little stop to that. Well, we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll just go around and pick up what gets left off. Big story this time is that the Americans have come in. They forced a landing. They took one hit uh, on that, that from that uh, fleet. They took nothing from the mines. All the transports got through. And the uh, when they get to do their bombardment there, or not the bombardment, pardon me, the artillery barrage on units. They only got two hits, one of which is absorbed by the tank, so the lost one man, and in the battle they only had took two hits, so another man was lost, whereas they took out, uh, I think, four men or something? I think they got four or five hits, so uh, Rome might be liberated. Of course, Austria-Hungary's got quite the force here that'll come down and probably put a stop to that, but uh, the Americans are following it up with a decent force as well. And there's more stuff on the way. Now, the American economy has been ravaged. They are down to 23, and that'll soon be 21, because Belarus will fall. Livonia fell, of course. Uh, Ukraine fell to the Germans. We'll have to uh, change that one out. But it hadn't fallen. The reason... Uh, didn't have the German rondelles, that the British actually came down here because they were in a battle here, and you're able to leave, uh, but then that should flip up. So the Germans actually get three more, which will give Central Powers three more as well. So yeah, that's even worse. Um, so we'll see. Uh, actually, I think the Ottoman are at 11. Might have counted incorrectly. So you have six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going to give them that one. Hey, one buck is one buck, right? You just never know when you could use that extra dollar. All right. So we'll throw another dollar in for the Ottoman here. All right. Uh, up on the Western Front, uh, I see the Ottoman, or the Austro-Hungarians have moved in, but may have to retreat now that Rome is under threat. Uh, the French continue to pound out the artillery, uh, built another four artillery this round. Uh, they don't have enough money to do that next round. Probably put in three though. Uh, the Germans are coming with their planes. They still have another turn of grace on that though, so they should be able to crank out a few more and then put in one attack uh, before that. Germans also had to come down here and uh, take Burgundy back, and so they lost a few guys. Uh, that would have been in, Fran in Paris right now, but they'll probably head in there. Some more tanks coming though, lots and lots of tanks. So I think uh, if Paris can't uh, knock down a, a bunch of the, the Germans in the next couple rounds here, uh, I just think the economics of this are going to be too telling and uh, it might be over. But I hate saying things are over when you got something like this going on and the resurgent uh, Middle East here, the British. Um, hopefully all this stuff here is enough to keep the Austro-Hungarians at bay, but Austria-Hungary is now making more than Britain and they only, they've only got really one target now, but I guess with Rome they got two. But. Uh, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, Germans are going to scoop up some easy money here. They're going to be up over 60 after this round. Uh, and that's just the way it is. They're, they're having a, a good solid finish here. Um, and maybe it'll all work out for them. We'll let you know what turn 24 looks like right after this. Quick little point of order. Yeah, once again my brain went back to the old Axis and Allies where you can zip around with tanks and infantry and split them up, but you can't do that. So we penalized uh, them a dollar and then just moved them down here uh, on this round and France got one more buck. So anyway, we took care of it. Doodles.
Well, number 24 uh, might have almost decided the game, but we'll uh, we'll probably play another round and just see what happens here. So uh, Britain here finds itself kind of stuck and got the hammer and the anvil here, and so not really sure who's who. Uh, British are going to have more tanks here, but uh, the Good stream of Austro-Hungarians coming down here, and Britain's no longer able to help out France if it wants to hold India. And again, if Britain can't build anything here, then the entire Central Powers can just focus up on this corner of the board. Uh, so the Americans landed here just to keep the Austro-Hungarians honest, and again, I had to go back and undo that, but thought I'd protect French money. That seems to be a bit more useful right now. Uh, the Americans gave a shot at Rome, didn't quite crack it. Uh, likely will next round. They've got another eight units coming this way and another four there, so another 12 units. And they might actually hold off an attempt to uh, free it, so Italy might be back in the game. Here's to the game that never ends. That's been going through my head quite a bit recently, so we'll see. Um, not much else to say. It's same old, same old. Steady stream of uh, German stuff headed west now. They don't have to worry too much about the south. And a couple of big battles here. France had their, their last till. The Germans inflicted pretty heavy casualties on the British. Uh, they killed 20 British infantry this last round. Um, and that really, uh, really took a lot of wind out of their sails. Uh, the French didn't lose anything on, on the defense, but on, when they attacked, the French ended up losing... I should write this stuff down, but they only lost a handful, like six or seven units, and the Germans lost, I think, nine. Uh, because this artillery here, with the air support, uh, air superiority, air supremacy, whatever you want to call it, uh, is, uh, is does give quite a boost. And it shouldn't be understated, because it's amazing how many fours you roll in this game. So, yeah, so just a really quick wrap up there uh, of that round. There's the German Air Force. It's going to be in on this next attack. Uh, some more tanks, a bunch more men. Um, probably put another big dent into the, uh, into the French. And if the Germans gain air superiority, I think that's going to be curtains for France. So, but we'll see. I mean, who knows? Maybe if Italy uh, falls... And when I say falls, I mean gets resurrected. <laughs> then, uh, and if the Americans can hold it, it all of a sudden Austria-Hungary's got to turn around again, right? So, so much stuff to do, and we'll just uh, leave things where they are right now. Um, and uh, fight, fight, fight. And see who's alive at the end of round 25. Well, that's going to do it, folks. Uh, a short 47 hours in, and uh, we're going to have to call this one for the Central Powers. Uh, we've finished up the 25th turn, and this is what the board looks like right now. And although the British are a little resurgent here, they couldn't get through this wall, and there's much more stuff on the way. I uh, got another, like, what, nine tanks coming down, another... 12 guys, some more artillery, and meanwhile you got this mess, and the resurgent Turks, who uh, collected more on this round than they did in the first round of the game, where they got 16, they got 17, thanks to Tartarstan. I don't want to hear anybody ever say anything bad about Tartarstan. All right, uh, down here the Americans uh, were attacked and were defeated. Uh, but not entirely. They have one guy left, but uh, France lost the money from that, and Germany is going to get it back. Uh, Rome has been liberated. Uh, you know, it would have made Mark Clark proud, but unfortunately, it's probably too little too late. This stuff here can definitely take care of this stuff, and if not, this stuff here can certainly come over and help. Uh, the Americans, we didn't even bother putting the build on and figuring that out because Paris is pretty much done. There's a good chance it'll fall on the next round, and if not, it'll be down to just the very, very minimum. Um, yeah, on the last round, the Germans didn't lose anything 
in their assault on the French and English, but they destroyed all the English. You can see there's none left. Uh, plus another 24 Frenchmen. They're just rolling the lights out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they've got 35 or 38 tanks or something. 38, yeah, it's going to be uh, worse anyway. But it's around 30 tanks, and they're going to add another six. So the French can't even roll enough dice to, to hurt them now. So it's over. And uh, there's just no getting around it, folks. Uh, this one is, is, is done. Now, you could say, hey, they've only got one capital. You know, you didn't really take Moscow. That's true. But I'm 25 rounds in. I haven't slept in three days, and I'm really hungry. So I'm going to go and uh, get some editing done on this thing and have a sandwich and maybe watch some Netflix and fall asleep to some old Star Trek episodes or something. I don't know. I'm not fully convinced that what I did here will work every time. Um, I'm st I always wrestle with this whole India thing because with the uh, if the British don't pour a ton of energy down here, the Ottoman runs amok. And I think we've all seen it, where the Ottoman ends up coming down to Africa and taking over Africa, and then it's just, it's curtains. They come over and take India, and, uh, and that's all she wrote. So, uh, leave your thoughts below, though. What do you think? Do you think there should be a limit on what is built in India? I don't build ships, but out-of-box rule says build everything you want. But uh, some people say, no, you can only build four. Other people said five. That sound, seemed a little arbitrary to me, but... That's just a house rule, and uh, but let me know, because if Britain wasn't able to do this, I think this game would have been over long before, because once Germany had established herself up here and didn't have to worry about Russia, uh, if the Britons started building a whole bunch of stuff up here, you know I'm going to be building a ton of subs, and I'm going to be coming over here and just absolutely massacring that Royal Navy, um, just to keep them off the continent, keep their economy uh, stagnant, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I would do. Of course, that'll slow down the march to Paris, but uh, that will definitely uh, help things for the Germans. We had to kill a lot of Brits over here. Make no mistake. Uh, overall, I think there were about sixty Brits that made it across, and uh, so that wasn't uh, it. Wasn't as though the British weren't here, but the French just used British casualties so the French could have a counterattack on their turn. Hopefully you enjoyed that, folks. Though that was a that was a marathon, I'm telling you. And uh, but hey, that's what spring break is for, right? So everybody, uh, as we always see here at the Hilltop Pillbox, that's just a that bit of music there. That's milk from the 1917. So we're gonna put on some nicer music as our denouement. All right, so as the closing music is playing, remember here at the Hilltop Pillbox, hug your loved ones. Nope, that's not good music. No, that's foreboding. We want to better. Here we go. There we go. That's pleasant music. All right, so we are going to bid you adieu with a bit of a nod to the French there, who kind of took a pounding this game. But remember to hug your loved ones, say hi to your friends, but long distance these days, thanks to the COVID-19. But always thank people who keep games going and keep the games community alive. And as always, may those dice be with you.